and welcome to Pop Nerdery, the show that is nerdier than a rage-filled lightsaber tantrum while wearing your grandfather's Halloween costume. This is a place where you're allowed to have an opinion on anything in pop culture, but you got to have more than just a little bit to say. Uh, so in a normal episode, we pick out some of the headlines that have us talking, do a deep dive, and then give some recommendation, but none of that today. No, no, friends. This uh -oh. is all about Star Wars. Bum, bum, ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> so that if this is your first time joining us, welcome. I am your host, Brent. And with me, as always, are a bunch of Force followers uh, who love some pop media and especially some Star Wars. Uh, I have George Lucas reincarnate Toph. And uh, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy's stepson, Dave. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. That might be the worst thing that anyone's ever said about me. I, I thought you might go. <laughs> I thought you might go light, uh, light side and dark side. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But had, I, had I planned it and uh, been smart and or funny, I might have said something better. But yeah. I'm neither of those things. So. Had I been clever, 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 you'd have a good podcast. podcast. <laughs> So you've got some options to follow us uh, around the interwebs. First and foremost is on Twitter at PopNerdery, P-O-P-N-E-R-D-E-R-Y. Uh, you can mostly just find my uh, hate letters to George Lucas there. Uh, I think they've <laughs> some other stuff, but it's mostly just hate letters to George Lucas. So if that's your kind of thing, welcome, friends. Uh, there are three ways to listen to the show. The first one is on the iTunes. Type PopNerdery into that search box in the podcast section. Check us out. Rate, review, subscribe. Uh, subscribe other people, subscribe people you don't know, grab people's phones on the street and subscribe them. They're going to love it, and they're going to love you for it. Mm -hmm. Second way is on the uh, the old website. You can uh, catch us in between episodes there. We've got the uh, the handy-dandy talkback section where we like to argue about things and write more hate-filled things towards George Lucas. Yes, George, <laughs> I did mean everything I typed. And finally, the third way is to draw a detailed hand sketch of the DL-44 Han Solo blaster. Ooh. Not from episode four, but for five Mail that to Dave Foltz. He'll appear over your shoulder. Podcast live in the room. Right I'll do it. You. I will do it. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do today uh, is we're going to spend you know, the next 10, 15 minutes uh, doing a quick spoiler-free review. Um, at this point, uh, if you are listening to this podcast, you have seen Star Wars. So we're going to keep that pretty short. Uh, we're just going to talk about our general um, impressions. We're going to talk about you know, what we thought of the acting, directing, um, the reaction to the film, a little bit of box office. We're going to talk about that sort of stuff, and then we're going to take our first break, and after that we're going to go totally spoiler full. We're going to so, spoil the shit out of it. Exactly. So, <laughs> uh, like I said, at this point, if you're listening to this show, if you subscribe to this podcast, you were probably there uh, on, you know, the first weekend. So uh, we are... Uh, we will give a, a solid, uh, you know, demarcation of when the spoilers are about to begin, and then turn the damn show off if you don't want to be spoiled. Um, but yeah, so Let's just go on to the next episode. Exactly. So first, or the last one. First up, um, I'm, I'm, I just want to get a an overall impression um, from you guys. Uh, what did you think of the movie? Spoiler free. Tove, take it. You've seen it most recently, buddy. I did. So uh, I unfortunately was delayed in getting to see the magic that was this movie. So I'm coming off of a viewing uh, a day and a half ago, basically. Uh, yeah. I was very concerned about it. I think I expressed this pretty clearly on this very show here. Uh, talking about how disappointed I was with the prequels. Um, mm -hmm. Two things happened that I wasn't expecting. The first one is when the um, Lucasfilm and everything else popped up. Uh, I actually was sitting there smiling with my mouth open like a child. <laughs> uh, and I am a curmudgeonly asshole. So there, it was true. like, it was unabashed glee. Uh, and I really didn't expect that. Like, I was excited. I was like, Star Wars, Star Wars. And then it happened and yeah. I was like, ooh. <laughs> so and for the podcast listeners, just imagine like Ren and Stimpy when they're drawn in their most comical, the goofiest yes. face <laughs> as possible. That one. That's Dove's dumb smile. And it, I'm sure it was in the theater. Like, it was it was authentic as hell. So, uh, and the second thing was I just came out and I, I was really, really happy with it. Obviously, we're going to delve into the guts of the thing later. But, you know, I honestly, my biggest impression was that was good. I am ready for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think my biggest impression of it was that was fun. Mm -hmm. It was so yeah. fun. Yep. 
yeah. and that was that was my favorite thing about it was walking out of the theater and and feeling like I had just watched a Star Wars movie, not uh-huh. feel, not right. necessarily feeling like I had uh, you know just been lectured about intergalactic uh, trade policy. agreements, uh-huh. C-SPAN with aliens, exactly. Um, yeah. But it, it was it was very fun. And then the second thing that stuck out most to me that I I was kind of surprised by um, was that I loved the new characters so much. Um, and we'll dive into why, and we'll talk a little bit about um, you know the the plot of it all. Mm-hmm. But I was surprised uh, when when I when this movie you know when the credits rolled at the end how much I loved uh, Ray, Finn, and Poe, uh, and Kylo Ren for that matter. Um, I think that they knocked it out of the park with those four characters. And that's a difficult thing to do, um, add new characters to a universe that we love already so love much. Yeah. Especially when you have Han Solo and you have Chewbacca standing there for you know significant portions of this movie, it's, it's difficult to not let the new characters get o- overshadowed. And I thought they did a really nice job with that. Yeah, I... Um... You, you stole the words right out of my mouth because that's kind of the one thing I have jotted down here for my spoiler free um, is that I love the new ca- characters, both the heroes and the villains. And I think those of you, if you haven't actually seen this movie, will figure out very quickly why. Um, but uh, I, I'm very curious to get more. And so that's the uh-huh. exciting part for me uh, because there seems to be character growth character motivations, character, um, you know, plot lines that still have yet to come. And that's a very encouraging thing, especially coming off the prequels where it was just kind of people kind of doing things and ending up places. And um, I didn't get to feel like I was part of part of their uh, their growth or their thought process at any stretch, at any point along the way. Um, the only th- other thing that I will um, kind of comment on from a spoiler free standpoint is the movie went by so fast. Yes. Um, yes, I, yes. I, uh, I'm very familiar with star Wars films. Obviously they all are around the same amount of time, but uh-huh. that was one thing I was not expecting was just the pace at which with this movie flew by. So be ready for an adventure. If you are going to the theater for the first time, um, drink a cup of coffee going in because, <laughs> Uh, it moves, and it's yeah. there's a lot going on. There's a lot, a lot of intrigue, and a lot of places to visit, faces to to see. So um, I loved it. Felt like Star Wars. That was the biggest thing. Yep. And yeah. uh, the music worked. The actors were great. The scenery was fun. Uh, the the story was easy to follow, but still left me wanting more answers and and that was all great stuff so yeah and i I do want to i I agree with you the pay it was paced so quickly and i'm not a uh, i'm not a a, like a jj abrams expert or a jj abrams um aficionado i i couldn't tell you if that pacing is the same in all of his movies but i know that uh the star trek reboot was paced very very quickly um and i i also liked that movie because it was just fun it was just very fun to watch um, I do want to mention the uh, the quote unquote old characters, uh, the original trilogy characters that we do see. Um, I you get uh, more of some of them and less of some others, so we'll talk about that during the spoiler section. But um, I thought I thought they did a really nice job, um, and they gave them uh, things to do for the most part. Um, I haven't you know I haven't seen a lot of Carrie Fisher over the last couple decades. Um, it was really nice to see her. It was really nice uh-huh. to see her um, in charge and, uh, you know, take over the scenes that she was in. Um, same thing with Harrison Ford. It seemed like um, he was trying for the first time in a while, hmm. uh, which was <laughs> which was fun to see. Um, and, uh, and I'll kind of leave it there, but I did want to throw that out there that um, it, it was just really nice the way that they – uh, meshed them all together, and you know, hopefully, you'll see some more different things in the sequels um, over the next, you know, three four years. But um, I, yeah, I, I really liked what they gave the the original trilogy characters to do in this movie. Uh-huh. That's fine, but I gotta trump you and say mm-hmm. that I'm 
I'm already more invested in the new characters, which is something oh, yeah, I yeah, totally yeah. didn't expect, and yeah. I'm very encouraged by. Like, I'm in love with Ray and uh-huh. Daisy Ridley and yeah, everything that's going on right there because she's cool. She, we'll talk about it more in the spoiler section, but uh-huh. she can handle her shit. She totally is capable. gorgeous and smart and fun to watch. So, yeah. um, you know, uh-huh. there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of just kind of brushing under the rug that I did in my own head of some of the original characters because yeah. they were they were there. They did what they were supposed to do, but I almost was ready to just kind of move on. And uh, and so yeah, I think that's a that's a testament to what Lucasfilm and Abrams and Kasdan yeah. have done. And I won't, I'm not going to spoil anything, uh, but I do want to say that there was a scene with uh, John Boyega as Finn and uh, Oscar Isaac as Poe early on in the movie that, you know, it, the, the scene with them together interacting, you know, lasted about, you know, five, eight minutes. I would have watched a full two-hour movie of those two dudes just cracking totally. jokes and, and, you know, and living through action beats and stuff like that. It was... yeah. It, yeah, I, I really like those two characters as well. I thought that um, they did a really nice job of giving Finn, of using John Boyega's comedic sensibilities. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Throughout, he was by, I, in my opinion, he was by far the funniest character in the movie. Yes. Yeah. Totally agree. And and yet the most compelling storyline of of all. Spoiler yeah. free. Is <laughs> Kylo Ren. Yeah. We're okay. gonna argue so much in the second section. We're we're gonna we're gonna move on uh, in just a second, but I do want to talk about um, the critical reaction to this movie because obviously um, the prequels were pretty roundly lambasted. Uh, they were, here, yeah, both here <laughs> and otherwise. Um, it was nice to see the the critical reaction to this movie. Everyone kind of had you know similar stuff to to say that we were saying is is you know. Um, it was fun. It was fun. It felt like a Star Wars movie. Totally. Let's see more. You know, yep. is, is kind of the the reaction I got from all the reviews I read. The one, um, the one kind of harsher criticism that I've seen is uh, has a lot to do with the plot and yeah. uh, and how kind of similar uh, the the movie feels to Episode Four to A New Hope. Um, and I think that that's a fair criticism, but yeah. Um, one it, was that, the, it was the safe choice. You can you yeah. can definitely criticize that part, but to finish yeah. your statement, Dave, it was the right thing to do, right? I I think so, and I think when you do that, when you have a movie that pays homage and also you know, I, I'll I'll say it, it it just flat out rips off a new hope in a couple of places. Mm-hmm. When you had the taste in all of our collective mouths from the prequels, you kind of have to wash that away and start anew. And the way that you do that is bring us back something that we're familiar with and Mm -hmm. do it while, you know, adding something. And they certainly did that too. Um, As far as uh, the fan reaction, the audience reaction, uh, we're recording this a little bit after the movie has been released about two weeks after. And the movie just today passed Titanic for the second highest grossing movie of all time. Um, I've seen it twice I know Brent, you've seen it twice. My uh, Carl the Destroyer has seen it three times at this point. <laughs> nice. So this I is that was scary. Yeah. No. <laughs> we are. Um, we are. I mean, nerds are going to go see this movie until they finally, you know, force us to stop by removing it from the theater. Right. But um, it it was it's it's fun enough to see multiple times. Uh, in the theater, it's Agreed. not a grueling two and a half hour, um, and I I can't imagine that you know everybody coming home for for the holidays uh, and going Didn't to see it with time. yeah going to see it you know oh you know I, the first time I saw it I saw it with you Brent the second time I was at you know a family Christmas party and my cousin said oh I haven't seen it yet so okay let's go see it tomorrow like yeah. I, yeah, you, you, my, yeah, my first time was with you, and my second time, my parents came up to to visit for for Christmas and some birthdays and stuff, and uh, put the kids to bed. And I said, "Mom and Dad, can I take you guys to go see Star Wars?" Sure. And I said, "You bought me all that Star Wars shit when I was little. Uh, I'll treat you to some Star Wars tickets." And my mom's not a big 
Star Wars fan, but she was like, ooh, that was fun. I liked it. And I was yeah. like, yeah, you did. So, <laughs> so it was perfect. Yeah. So uh, at this point, uh, we're going to take our first break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to go fully spoiler uh, full. Spoiler full, I guess. Spoiler, mm-hmm. spoiler yep, full. we will. We, we are going to talk about the nitty gritty, the plot of the movie. We'll talk about um, some Easter eggs, things that we like, didn't like. Um, and we will uh, be right back. Welcome back. Um, so now uh, we've we've gone uh, spoiler free for a little while. Uh, we gave you our general impressions. Now we're gonna dig in. And honestly, I've been waiting to have this conversation since I saw the movie two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, part part of the fun of doing this podcast is that when I see something like this, I see something new. Uh, I know that. Uh, you know, next week I'm going to talk about it with Tove and Brent. So uh, so I've been waiting for this for a while. Um, let's first off kind of start off talking about the plot of the movie. I uh, hinted at this in the first segment, um, but the critical reaction, the, the, the one major piece of criticism is that this movie rips off A New Hope fairly heavily um, in terms of story beats or themes or uh, different things about the characters. Um, That was one of my favorite things about this movie was that it was paced so quickly, just like A New Hope is. If you go back and you watch A New Hope again, that movie is paced very, very quickly. You're just jumping from, you know, oh, here's the next thing we have to do. Here's the next thing we have to do. Um, And I, I did not mind one bit that... Uh, you know, we were on Star Killer Base, which was a bigger Death Star, and we right. and we had, you know, our our main pro- protagonist uh, was on a desert planet until she accidentally runs into not Han Solo but his ship, and then yeah. runs into Han Solo. Um, they needed flight off ta- Tatooine. They needed flight off Jakku. They exactly. found it in the Millennium Falcon. Oh, God. I, I liked all of those <laughs> things. I liked all of those bits where. Where they were giving us a, uh, if if it wasn't a you know a straight up Easter egg like uh, you know John Boyega pulling the Jedi trainer out of the uh-huh. uh, yeah. while they're while they're on the Millennium Falcon. I think uh, Dave hit my shoulder in that moment. <laughs> and, and yeah. Uh huh. There were a couple of moments where I hit your shoulder, some good, some bad, but it was uh-huh. like, yes. did you see that? Did you see yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I like that they did that. I don't know how you guys felt about it, but I liked that it felt familiar while they were adding new stuff. I was really disappointed with the first half of the movie. Really? Like I, said, I liked I liked this. I had it was fun and everything else. I it was just such a safe choice to remake for, and I trust JJ enough that I wish he had done something like I could have done like the first third of the movie in a complete remake of four, the continuation of it through the first half of it. I don't know. I I struggled. So what with was that. the what was the line of demarcation where you go? Ooh. Um, that's a good point. I don't know if there it was something really specific or if it just I felt like it thematically took part of it was. And I know we're going to touch on this later, but initially I really struggled to get into the new characters. Like oh. and their performances were good and the casting was good and everything else. I was just looking for, uh, for me like a stormtrooper who doesn't want to be a stormtrooper is a good start to a story hook. But like mm-hmm. it was given to me as the entire motivation for this character, and yeah. while that's a great basis for stuff, like I don't know, I wanted, I, I wanted more there, and they gave it to me a lot later in terms of like looking at his birth records and that kind of stuff, and it was like, oh, so these guys are taken from their families and trained from the beginning, and you don't want to do like a big old dollop of expedition into a new piece of world building, right? But I think that was a big enough plot point that's run throughout the entire series of, you know, who are the stormtroopers, where are these armies coming from, that we could have... It would have helped me connect faster uh, with some of that backstory in the first third of the movie. Okay. Um, It's interesting that you phrase it that way, and I was kind of curious to see if this came out of your mouth when I asked you about the line of demarcation. But the force vision, flashback, whatever you want to call what Ray Mm -hmm. had, was kind of that point for me where it was like, oh, there's, there's more to chew on. That popped um, in my head. But a, I think something had happened. Something was bigger before that as well. That was when you said okay. that. That was the thing that popped in. But I think it was like, and that's why I said I don't think like that was the big event. That was really like, okay, I'm I'm really sold on this now. And not that I wasn't oh, before, okay. but this was like, okay, we're and like I said, my you know the first thing it was like this was fun. I'm ready for the next one. Where now it's like, okay, 
You did the safe one. It made a billion dollars. Everybody likes it. Please go do something new now. Right. Yeah. Well, and they, and they <laughs> I think that they had to do the safe one because they already have – they're they're telling us there's going to be a Star Wars every year. There's going to yeah. be a Star Wars movie every single year. They have to nail Bears the repeating. first one. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's why it didn't bother me a ton because, uh, like yeah. I said, it was you fun. And I know that you know we're gonna get the chance to to move on further. Yeah, I think I think you're right, um, Brent. That is the that is the line where it felt like it became its own movie. Was mm-hmm. the for yeah. whatever we, we're gonna call it the Force Vision? Let's call it the Force. But yeah. that's that was where they that was something one that we we didn't really see in yes. the, in the original trilogy or in the prequels for that uh, matter. Uh, Wait, unless that's case. what. Yeah, that Luke in the cave is like the weirdest. If you can say anything is quote unquote weird and doesn't fit what everything else we see in Mm -hmm. the original trilogy, it's that that moment. Yeah, yeah. I I liked the way that they uh, and and again spoilers if you are listening to this and have the fuck are you doing? We told you like twenty minutes ago. I'm just saying. All right, this is the last time. That's the last time I'll say. You're here and you're and we're spoiling this movie on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Here we go. So. I thought that there was there are probably a lot of external reasons why they had to kill Han Solo in this movie. God damn it, JJ. We're already but, there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So right, let's just do it. So that so that's that was the thing I that's the biggest revelation for people who are sure. fans of the original trilogy is that that Han Solo is now dead in the Star Wars universe. He was killed by his son who was revealed to be Kylo Ren. That was one I don't know why, but that was one that I never saw coming. I never saw Kylo Ren as a Skywalker or uh, or a, a, a Solo. No? Uh, I I don't know why that it seemed like he's the guy who wears a mask. So it seems like that's probably obvious to ask questions about his past. But I didn't see that coming. Um, but so they probably had to kill Han Solo in this movie, or they had to give us an explanation of why he wasn't going to be showing up in the future. Right. Um, and not only that, there's in two years or three, I think three years, there's going to be a Han Solo anthology movie about a young Han Solo. You don't want to confuse people right. uh, by having two Han Solos at once. Um, and I'd, and- I'd kind of love to see him having daddy issues or something so that some of this stuff carries a little bit more yeah. weight. But go ahead. Yeah, but I, th- I wonder if that's it's going to come from Leia more so than from yeah. Han. Like, I imagine that Han... Probably has some weird family shit too, but I think right. that's a very cool thing now they get to do since Han's gone is specifically explore just that. Yeah, okay. explore explore their relationship more with Leia because yeah. Han Solo sucks all the air out of the room, right? Mm-hmm. I said something earlier, and I, I got a reaction from you, Brent, when I said that Leia gets to own the scenes she's in. Yeah, I I meant uh, I meant that the character was in charge, um, but I I do agree with you that she she does. She does kind of play second fiddle to Harrison Ford in the scenes mm-hmm. they're in. Uh, yeah, the, the actress. I, yeah. We are bouncing all over the place, so please bear with us, listeners. Yeah. But uh, Leia's performance, while it's totally appropriate for that character um, to kind of be icy and you know very formulaic in her battle strategies, and it's okay if my husband leaves, um, and then comes back and, yep, our son went missing. I'm going to ask you, after not seeing you for however many years, to go save him. Um, The performance by Carrie Fisher, and God bless her, you know, it it does seem like, you know, with the drug issues and and things, she's had a rough go at it. So God bless her for giving it a whirl and, and trying. You know, not to say her performance was bad, but, she can barely move her lips. It's hard for her to emote. Okay. You know, it, the less screen time Leia gets, the better. Probably. You know, and I I feel like an awful person saying that. I not thought she because was I don't like Carrie Fisher or don't want to yeah. look at her. Like, there are a lot of people that have attacked how she actually has aged and stuff. That's not oh, fair. God. I'm not doing yeah, that. Oh. But, but, you know, it just it doesn't. It doesn't work for me to see a bunch of Carrie Fisher on screen. I love that the character of Leia is around, and I don't want anyone else playing it. But, yeah. you know, there were a lot of scenes, I even noticed it on the second viewing, there were a lot of scenes where, like, they just shot from behind her to yeah. watch Han when like they're talking and stuff. Yeah. And it's better. Leia talking, but, you know, just because her... I, 
her upper lip doesn't move when she talks, and it's <laughs> it doesn't look like Princess Leia. It looks like California has taken its toll on Carrie Fisher's <laughs> very version of of Leia, and yeah. and that's just it just bums you know twelve year old me out. And on a side note, my kids who are now into Star Wars constantly want to talk about the Leia in the slave bikini. Slave bikini. <laughs> and my kids are five and three and like it, it kind of warms my heart that they're that, you know, red blooded, mm-hmm. you know, chauvinists even Martin. at that uh, little age. But but at the same time, like, you know, makes me a little ashamed. But anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I I do agree with you that it you know in the future we will probably see roughly as much Leia as we got in this movie. We'll probably get yeah. it moving forward. Uh-huh. Um, I do think that there is. I, I liked seeing her and Han interact. Um, it was a little. It did feel a little bit awkward, but I feel like you don't see somebody for twenty years. It would be it a little be bit awkward. awkward. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Or however right. long. You know that break is. It felt appropriate, whatever it actually looked yeah. like. It felt appropriate. For but, sure. So, so, and you mentioned we're jumping around. the The original reason I brought this up was they. I think there are external reasons why, and most of them are probably Harrison Ford wanted this to be his last one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you, if you know you have to kill off Han Solo, make it serve the story, and I feel like it really did. Totally did. It yep. definitely served the story. It definitely made you feel like it tugged at the heartstrings uh, when that moment happened. And I think a lot of people are giving Adam Driver shit for being emo uh, in his portrayal of of Kylo Ren, Ben Solo. But I thought, especially that scene, he was great. Absolutely. I thought he was fantastic as the character. There are some things about that character that are kind of like, you know, whiny or whatever, where he... You know, pulls out his lightsaber and and mauls a control panel. I loved it. Just for fun. I love the temper tantrum. I really yeah, did. I yeah. I so there are those things will get made fun of though. Is all I mean. No, it's fine. Uh, some people have made, but sure. But I thought I thought Adam Driver. You have to have an actor that can pull that off, and I I really liked his performance because if if you don't, it's it's. Anakin Skywalker right. from well, the prequels. And I think there was such a difference between the whiny of Anakin and this kid who is so desperately trying to be something that he really isn't sure that he is. Like, he's holding himself yeah. up to Vader and doesn't really feel like he's doing it right. Like, that's mm-hmm. that yeah. the character model to do shit. Like, yeah. when it goes wrong to batter the shit out of it with your lightsaber. Yeah. 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 It's been said online, but that's who Anakin should have been in the prequels. Right, you know, right. I never heard Anakin bitch about the fact that I don't have a dad. Like, that's weird. I don't mm-hmm. understand where right. I come from or why I'm a person. Like, he never addressed that or cared about that, and like that's something a human, even though we're in a galaxy and far, far away, human. should care about. Yes. Um, and and I, these are the things, these are the exposés into, you know, what's going on in Kylo Ren, Ben Solo's head that we yep. got in one movie. It's great. And yep. uh, you mentioned kind of that iconic scene there where Han dies. That was the first moment, as somebody who kind of let himself in on a lot of spoilers, I actually saw, like, a facial similarity between Adam Driver and yeah. Han Solo. Oh, totally. And whether that actually exists or it was just forced on me because that moment was iconic and Put you right. worked or the performances were good, but it was there, and it, totally it was it. great. Um, yeah. And I love Kylo Ren as a character for a lot of reasons, but specifically this whole thing of, like, he's struggling with the light coming yes. back in. Mm-hmm. Which is super unique for this storyline that yeah. we've gotten throughout the saga. And that's a compelling thing for us to kind of see. He wants to embrace the dark. He's compelled yeah. to stay in the dark all mm-hmm. the time. You know, maybe Vader was going through some of that, but we never we never saw any of it um, until he finally let himself back onto the light, uh, into the light or whatever. Kylo Ren took that step into, you know, his path toward the dark side that needed, that he felt needed to happen when he killed his father. And we saw him throughout the movie kind of wearing the mask when he was 
unconfident in certain situations and then taking off the mask when he was confident in certain situations. So it just, it really, like the whole character worked on so many different levels. Yeah. And it seemed very strategic and well thought out, which is which is such a an encouraging <laughs> thing for the future. The opposite so. of what we've gotten in Lost <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? And and I I did love that you got the flip side that he was he was struggling with the light. I did that was that was my some of my favorite dialogue from the movie was where he was kind of describing that or talking mm-hmm. about it with Snoke or talking about it with with Han uh, in that scene. I I loved that's just something we haven't yeah we haven't thought about a lot. No, uh, no. Is that that little bit? Um. So so Han Solo dies. We find out that Kylo Ren is Ben Solo. It gives us a lot more questions about what has happened in the intervening so many years, questions uh, yeah. yeah between Endor and this movie. Yep. Uh, it but I I think that they ask the questions and give you just enough answers to where it's not a frustrating. Uh, it, to where it's not a frustrating thing. They give you kind of a vague explanation of, you know, Luke Luke tried to train uh-huh. more Jedi. Um, Kylo, uh, you know, turned on him and and was seduced to the dark side. Um, and Luke, you know, vanishes because he's ashamed of this or whatever the, you know, whatever the case is. And I feel like they have asked just enough questions to where I, I can't wait to see the next one. I can't wait to see... Yeah where they go and how they how they give us those little pieces um just like they did in the original trilogy where you get a, a you know a bit of information here from Obi-Wan or a bit of information here from Yoda about what happened before yeah. what's happening yeah. and we don't have to wait nearly as long not oh, even yeah. a full 2 years yeah exactly Great. that was one of my frustrations in the early part is exactly this issue of getting enough information um, and it goes back to this, again, like the motivation issue with the new characters. In the mm-hmm. same way, like, you know, we've got the the rebellion, the resistance, excuse me, not the rebellion, <laughs> resistance. And But <laughs> you're like, where's the New Republic? Like, the, what is the... the Senate, yeah. You know, I mean, like, what, just tell me more of what, there are a lot of people doing things independently. Like, two guys, that was the other problem that I had a little bit with, like, the buddy. It was like... You helped me escape. That's awesome. We're best friends now. Let's go on adventures. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have known him for like 10 minutes. There's no yeah, motivation but, but then it, to do this. But then it ended up as abruptly as it started, which seemed appropriate too. Kind of. Yeah. Although that was one of the other things that really – and I'm like, in what world does Poe just wander away from this mission? Yes. I hope the guy that I just randomly met finishes my mission for me. Yes. Right, no, right. No, that, that whole thing was very strange. Like a lot funny. of the stuff on Jakku was strange. The TIE fighter crashes. Well, he had parachuted. That was fine. Okay. He, founds his, he found his jacket. jacket, but not him. Right. And then the TIE fighter just sinks into the desert. The sinking sands. They, yeah, they <laughs> mentioned the sinking fields. There was some random yeah. reference, yeah, to yeah. The, the sinking sands. Uh, the sinking sands. But, like, oh, yeah. but my, Finn barely reacts to that, which yeah. he, he is the viewer's point of view at that point. Sure. Yeah. Right? He sees a TIE fighter crash or just sink into the sand, and he kind of, like, stumbles backward and looks goofy at it and then turns around and walks away. Like, if I saw that shit, I'd be running the fuck away. Uh-huh. I don't want to get sucked into the sand. No. I don't want yeah. the Tremor monster to come out and eat me. Yeah, and instead he's like, I got a jacket. That's neat. <laughs> right. <laughs> da, 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 da. So, so we're we're kind of talking about this now, but so this is kind of some of the stuff that you thought was weird or or you didn't like. Um, well, well, let maybe let's in, explore each character maybe a little bit first, okay, and then okay. let's go to our gripes if, okay. if that's okay. Yeah. Because um, I definitely think there's at least one one other character, if not a few, that we ought yeah. to okay. delve so, into. So we a, talked about Kylo Ren a bit. Kylo. Uh, yeah. I uh, obviously the next step, the next place to go is Ray. Sure. Um, I think that Ray is the probably one of the most fully formed characters that we've gotten in this universe. Yeah. I think that there are a lot of there are still a lot of questions, a lot of things that we don't know, but I think they do a really nice job from a a, a very early point in this movie of, you know, making you feel sympathetic for mm-hmm. you know what she's gone through or making you feel sympathetic about what her backstory is while right. also not making you feel uh, it's the difference between feeling sympathetic for somebody and feeling sorry for them. Right. Uh, and they do a really exactly, nice 
it's exactly like Kevin McAllister in Home Alone mm-hmm. to uh, to arcan back to our uh, holiday annual uh, one episode before. Kevin McAllister is totally functional, regardless of the fact that he's in a no-win situation right. Right. and uh, has no guidance and and uh, it has a whole bunch of shit coming his way. Yeah, and she, and she's kind of got the same thing where she she is left to fend for herself. Um, and obviously, we're gonna get more uh, backstory on that character, but she's left to fend for herself, and that doesn't make her crumble. It just makes her stronger because yeah. she's a, you know she's a a good character. Um, and you know, obviously, there's a part there's there's a part of you that's cynical that says you know this is this character is a direct reaction to some of the criticism about female characters in the original trilogy or the lack of female characters altogether from the original trilogy yeah. but but just taking it for what it is it's it's great to see her kind of addressing like like the scene where she's running with Finn uh, they're running away from the tie fighters and she's like what are you holding my hand for what are yeah. you yeah quick yeah, grabbing my hand at him multiple yeah, times quick, yeah quick grabbing my hand or like when when he gets knocked out and she wakes him up and he goes, "Are you okay?" And she's like, she's, "Yes, of motherfucker, course. Motherfucker, you're the one who was knocked unconscious. Yeah, not you're me. You're the one that just had to. You yeah. Know. And he's ready. Yeah, all those, all and those work away. so well because it's like, yeah. no, 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 Ray can take care of her own self. It's yeah. Fine, yeah. Dude. Yeah, I would yeah. care more about that criticism about her being a reaction to, oh, we've got to have a female character in here if yeah. she wasn't awesome. Yeah, so right. I don't, she was I don't really need to worry about that criticism because she's rad on her own. So yeah. I don't have to worry about that. Well, and yeah. like, and and you guys, you guys don't have daughters. I don't have any kids, but I can imagine. Um, you know, one of one of our close friends, Brent, who we went and saw this movie with, he he has three daughters, and he was telling me about how he cannot wait until his daughters are old enough so that he can show Hell them. Yeah. He said he said oh, that yes. he will probably show them this movie before he shows them the original trilogy. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's cool, a bad yeah. idea. That's not. I, I mean, it's not. It's not no. what I would do. It's not what I would Wait, do. But for, whoa. But for, yeah. We totally missed an opportunity to talk about that. Spoiler free or spoiler full. Unfree. Um, you can walk into this movie knowing nothing about episode yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six. You yeah. can. It works, right? I don't. I don't think it doesn't work. It does because, work as a movie. I think it would yeah. be fine. It definitely wouldn't be as much fun. Like when we all, we've repeated that at least well, ten times. Yeah, it's so, not as much fun for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For for the new piece, I'm saying like one of the yeah. biggest things. I think they'd get a kick out of it because we're all going like, ah, oh, you know, you're redoing four or whatever. So if they have never seen it, then yeah, Why I think not? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm with the you. The Hero's Journey by uh, totally. what Joseph Campbell or whatever. Yeah. And, and you just you just have a different uh, different looking hero than we're used to, especially yeah, in yeah. this universe. Um, yeah, yeah. She is my new favorite Skywalker. I'll tell you that much. Well, ah, see, ah. here's the thing. I actually so there there are a number of theories. Couple on, different camps, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a number of different theories. Uh, there was the one that I right after seeing the movie for the first time, I was very convinced that that she and Kylo were siblings. And, and I went into some, the film thinking that. Oh, and that ahead. for some reason, you know, Han and Leia, you know, they, you know, didn't remember or didn't put the <laughs> puzzle pieces together, yes. or they were mind wiped or something. Mm-hmm. Um, this, is, that, this is what the, it was in the EU, right? With the evil. Yes, so there, there were there were uh, twins. There okay. were twins in the EU that were son and daughter of the Solos, yes. and Jason he, and Jaina. And Jason and turns into uh, Sith. Turns right? to the dark side, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, I went into the film thinking that, though yeah. there was a 10-year difference in the uh, actor's age, I still yes. thought that's what we were getting going yeah. into the movie. Yeah. But yeah, you could on that, that first viewing, I paid very close attention to Luke, or I'm sorry, Leia and Han's reaction to Rey. Mm-hmm. And based on that, I was like, there's no way they would care as much about their son as they do, right. mm-hmm. and care so little about their daughter. I don't know, but there are <laughs> a couple. Weird, was the Ray. There's some weird things in there that that serve that theory though, like where when they come back after Han dies, the hug. and Leia hugs Ray, and it's like they don't fucking okay. know each other. Okay, she helped and went through some shit. Um, yeah. 
And but, here's here's the thing. She can either know that Ray is a Skywalker and her niece and uh-huh. be okay with that knowledge and still give mm-hmm. a warm embrace. That's true. Or just be a motherly comfort for her in that moment, right? Yeah. And or, the, the and then the third then the third thing that maybe the force. Well, force well, sensitive. Great yeah. point. That's, Great point. Yeah. At which Leia, you know, showed when Hosni and Prime got blown mm-hmm. up or whatever. Yeah. Um, the other thing that was just kind of brought to my attention is maybe, just maybe. They did have a daughter. The Solos did have a daughter, and that daughter went to train with Luke. Uh But then Luke told Leia and Han that that daughter died. Ah. And then Luke hid that daughter on Jakku, knowing that she would need to come back and help at some point. History repeats itself. Time is a flat circle. Or, or that whatever, uh, whatever you want to go or with. That Luke Maybe Luke there. has this long plan yeah. that Oof. Ray, who is Luke and or uh, Han and, and Leia's daughter, but hmm. they don't realize it, uh-huh. is a yeah. scavenger somewhere. Or, or that Luke put her there because uh, he wanted no one to ever train her because he failed so mightily with Kylo Ren. I've, sure. I've heard that sure. too. Sure. That, that is actually the best explanation for the uh, she, that the she is a solo. Uh, right. That's, that's the, the only. That's the only she's a solo that I kind of buy. Then right. the next camp is that she is Luke's daughter. There's that. Which I'm kind of in. Right I think now, that's where I, I am. And most yep. people are kind of in that one. And well, one thing that people are using yes. as support for that is the fact that she has a British accent. And there are some people that are saying, well, you know, they're kind of clumsy with British accents in this universe anyway, so yeah, maybe but they... they're not. Exactly. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of my point is um, there was a really... A uh, nice article on Vox where they talked. She's about, Phasma's daughter. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> where they talked about um, the differences where like the British uh, sounding accent is used for you know people that are from the core worlds or people yes. that are um, right. or raised on core worlds or people that um, are trying to sound uh, like yes. they're elite, like uh, yes. Leia. Mm-hmm. Leia uses it at the beginning of a New, hope, a new hope and loses right. it. Yep. Um, when she's when she's talking to Tarkin, for example, mm-hmm, um, correct. Tarkin is a character that is from the Outer Rim, but is always trying to move his way up in social standing. Uses a British, you know, kind of what we would call a British accent, mm-hmm. um, according to canon. Thanks, Lucasfilm. Right. So then the theory. <laughs> so then the theory is that she uh, has a a mother who is from a core world. Uh, sure. Or and that she, you know, grew up on you know those first five years. Maybe or spend more time with their mothers too. Oh, gender roles. Oh, Star uh, Wars. Oh, uh, uh, on a core world. Uh, right. So so and that would and that would kind of make sense um, based on that theory. Um, sure. That that is the most that's the most obvious one because then in episode eight we're gonna get the no I'm your father line from Luke. Like that's the most obvious it, one. Mm-hmm. Well. It the most the reason it's most obvious for me is Ray seems like the main character. Yes. Like yeah. Ray and Kylo both seem to share that mantle, but yes. Ray specifically as the hero seems to carry the mantle of hero uh-huh. main character and we we're kind of at least I don't know if it's specifically been said. I think I think it's specifically been said by Kathleen Kennedy. The episode, the episodic saga of Star Wars is about the Skywalker family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Which includes so the solos in Kylo it, Ren. Well, and, right. Yeah. Yeah. So Kylo Ren, sure, but Ray's got to be a Skywalker or Solo somehow, so, right? And that's and that's what most people have, have kind of uh, latched on to, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am actually a really big fan of... There's a, there's a theory that actually... Uh, I was reading an article on Medium, someone posted on Medium, that has a lot of support for Rey being the granddaughter of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which would be my favorite of the theories and the one that I am rooting for, uh, mainly because Obi-Wan's my favorite character from the original trilogy. He's actually also my favorite character from the the prequels. Well, easily, uh, yes. Be, because, that should have been his story. But, right, yes. 
but they they go and I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because I don't want to you know spend everybody's time on it if it doesn't end up being true. But um, I really like this theory because I think that making her a Skywalker and having uh, Leia's son fall to the dark side and having Luke's daughter be the hero, mm-hmm. I feel like that's some sort of a comment on Leia, and I don't I, I don't mm-hmm. like that so much. And, and or a lot Han. But yeah. A lot of people have said that it's because, you know, Han's a scoundrel or whatever, but um, I would prefer... I like them, scoundrels. <laughs> I would prefer for them to either be siblings or to not be related at all. Um, because I, I, that's that's just my, my storytelling preference. If she ends up being Luke's daughter, I will, I'm will. i sure that they will do it in a way that will satisfy me. Um, or at least I'll cross my fingers that they do. But the, the main support for Rey being a Kenobi um, is a lot of the it has to do with a lot of the plot points that happen in the movie. Uh, yeah. The first is the British accent, obviously. Right. Um, you know, he has the, you know, uh, Obi-Wan has a British accent. Yep. Um, well, the fact that but, she she okay. uses the Jedi mind trick a couple of times, uh, which is uh, right. a, a fairly Obi-Wan specific. Yes. Uh, that's his kind of signature move. He loves him uh, some mind trick. Very for- uh, his forte, for when, sure. When she is um, captured on Star Fort. Killer Base and escapes and is kind of you know jumping around the inside of that, very reminiscent of Obi Wan inside the Death Star from A New Hope. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the fact that they have used a lot of Obi Wan is the main character from the original trilogy or the first six movies that is not seen. Right, he's not a big part of this movie, but they use his name. Uh, Kylo Ren is he is. His name is Ben Solo, so his namesake is right. Obi Wan. Um, so they they call him out, and then at some point in the movie, uh, during the Force Vision, you hear both Ewan McGregor right. and Alec Guinness's yep. voice. Right. So right. why why do that if you're not going to have more callback to that character? And I think I just think it's a compelling case, and I think that Ray Kenobi is uh, that's my vote. I if I get a vote, if JJ is listening to this or Kathleen Kennedy yeah. is listening to this, that's my Which vote. I'm I, think sure they are. Most, I think that would be the most compelling to me. I like that a lot. Yeah. There's have... there's a there's a lot that goes toward it which is fun. Um but there's a lot of obvious questions about it, right? Yeah. Um the obvious questions are I mean the, the your first point was she speaks in a British British accent, Obi Wan spoke in a British accent. Well let's go back and think through what we know about Obi Wan. Obi Wan was a member of the uh Jedi Order and wasn't allowed to have a wife. And well, he seemed very much like a rule follower, correct? So well, there's then, nothing there's nothing up until the point of the fall of the Republic that we should uh-huh. think Obi Wan ever was fucking around and yeah. uh, and making babies with people, in, right? In, in the his, Clone Wars, he's in love with Sabine or whatever, and there's I, that. I don't even thing. know about that. Okay, but, God, but there God there is a there is a twenty to thirty year period where he's a lonely hermit yes. in Tatooine. Correct. Well, and the Jedi longer. Order no longer exists at that point. Correct. Level. And in which case, he's in Tatooine, and and that's where I was going Outside, with this. Yeah. An outer rim. Yeah. He's Ben Kenobi. He's got this wife that he's making babies with. Why would you know a household where he's speaking in a proper English accent actually rub off on his child, then to rub off on his yeah. grandchild, all that. that. So... I get that. That was my only my only point there. But. I get that, and there there are also uh, there. I mean, there are many reasons why it's not, um, but there are just enough reasons why it is that that have me holding out hope. It's fun, right? Um, yeah, and also there's there's also just some visual cues, like when she does have that force vision, she opens up like this this like wooden case to pull the lightsaber out of, uh-huh. you know, in a new hope. He pulls out. He pulls Anakin's lightsaber yeah. out of this wooden case yep. to give to Luke. I wanted to do this when exactly, the and right time. and it would be a cool reversal if in when the, the first time was trilogy right. you have a Kenobi training a Skywalker. It would be really right. cool to have a Skywalker then training a Kenobi. Right. Um. I don't know. I I I would like to see. You know, the first lightsaber battle that we ever see is uh is. Anakin Skywalker versus Obi Wan Kenobi, 
it would be really cool to see that battle live on through their grandchildren. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the one I'm I'm voting for. I, I get behind I, that. I think, I think it is far more I likely. I think it's that, fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's very it. fun. It's it's kind of unexpected, honestly, because yeah. going into the movie, I want I I was like she's a solo. Coming out of the movie, I'm like, obviously she's a Skywalker. But yeah. then you're like, oh. And then all these other points are raised about maybe she's a Kenobi. I don't think she's a nobody. Yes. That's kind of the I one agree. thing I'm ruling out is I don't think she's she's yeah. like random. you know, some random name brought up in novel that came out last year. Right. Daughter's cousin. You know? I agree with yeah. you. I agree so. with you. I, I, I definitely agree with that, that she's somebody and that there's a story behind it. Yeah, and and, yeah. and there wouldn't they wouldn't make this movie and release it unless we want to know who her parents are and there's a big payoff with that, right? Yeah. Even so if they're people we don't really know, there's a payoff for who they are. There's got to yeah. be. Yeah. Um, the last thing I'll say about Ray before we kind of get to our biggest likes and dislikes. Yeah. I, I loved how she ended up at the end of the movie. If we have to lose Han Solo, it's nice that we then get her in the Millennium Falcon Agreed. with Chewie as the co-pilot Agreed. with R2. Like they set that character up for us all to love her. Right. Mm-hmm. That, totally. That character is, I mean, obviously they want to make a likable character, but they really stack the deck by the they end of the movie. Everything. Exactly. Yeah. She has yeah. Luke's lightsaber. She yeah. is powerful in her own right. Right. She, you know, she has R2 with her on this mission uh-huh. to go. Yep. Yeah, so I, I, I really like how they how they Han, Han immediately liked her. He wanted her to I, maybe yeah. take a job as part of yeah. their crew. Yes, all yeah. those things, for and sure. And she knew how to fix the Falcon. She knew how to fly it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and so people have had some gripes about that. There's the whole Mary Sue mm-hmm. online yeah, which gripes I think and is stuff. Kind of bullshit. I think it's bullshit, too, because for every reason that they bring up that stuff, you can say, well, every other male character has, you know, had those same advantages, and they actually built a backstory for her as to why. She's been a fucking scavenger, holding her own, fighting off people, all that shit, yeah. Can I real just real quick, if you don't know what a Mary Sue is, Mary Sue is a reference to, like, a fan fiction character that people use where the fan fiction writer kind of puts themselves in the shoes of this person. And this person is eminently capable. This person is, uh, never, never does anything wrong. Only really serves to be, uh, a character that the audience puts themselves into like into that person's to explore the world and not really add anything different. Uh And I think that it's a, it's a big criticism because then they're saying that this isn't a fully a fully formed character and that, you know, Lucasfilm did it again where they just created a female character, you know, to get credit for it instead of, right. you know, create. So I, I, and I do think that that is, is mainly bullshit. You brought and, up a I lot think, of good points. Yeah. It's, it's, she has every attribute needed to be an amazing, like, um, force for lack yeah. of a better word in this galaxy because of all the skills she gained as a lonely little kid, yeah. On a desert planet, who had to survive for a long right. time, you know the breaking into Starkiller Base, the 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 place where you know the weak spot of of that uh, that weapon. She was very familiar with Empire technology. It was okay that right, she right. could like dig into places and figure out how to get in. Yeah. All that stuff really did make sense if you actually sit and take time and not just wag your fist at uh, yeah. the, the little kids in the y- in your yard. Um, I agree. She's no more yeah. of a Mary Sue than Luke was a Mary Sue. Totally. In, in A New Hope. Even right. less so, really, when you try it, when you actually think it yeah. through. Um, so. and, and one other thing, just to kind of jump back, uh, we talked about, you know, echoing a lot of the stuff that happened in A New Hope. Uh, you can gripe about the fact that Starkiller Base was just another Death Star, but in a sense, that really actually kind of makes a lot of logical um, evolution sense for we need to build a weapon that's going to destroy planets. Okay, Death Star. We need to build a weapon that's going to destroy entire star systems, and we're trying to uh, exude our power on the galaxy so we have the respect. Pulling energy out of a sun and blasting it and destroying entire 
entire solar systems is pretty intense. So, uh, sorry, just needed to get there yeah. uh, and, while and we're think, talking positives. I do think that it was also a nice way to close the loop, because that was a criticism of the original trilogy, is like, oh, and Jedi, they just have another Death Star. Right, you know, that's, that's right. A crit- so I think now they kind of close that loop. You get to see something that you're familiar with to start off this new trilogy, but you and you kind of get to to close it off. So, um, totally. So you you mentioned we're talking that we've talked a lot about likes. We have been very positive. Um, the the gripes that I have are not big, but I'm kind of curious uh, to hear what our resident curmudgeon yes. uh, has to say. Uh, Brent and I have talked quite a bit here. Uh, Topher, what are a couple of things that uh, that you have uh, in terms of uh, gripes for this movie? I, I think first and foremost that it's definitely all my stuff is pretty minor. Like none of this actually took away from my enjoyment. And yeah. with the rest of the Lucasfilm stuff, usually it, you have to try to like a movie in spite of things. And so I was just I was <laughs> pumped beyond belief that you know all the stuff that kind of made me arch an eyebrow or you know fur a forehead mm-hmm. were all minor stuff. Um, yeah. You know, a couple we touched on some of it. It was just I struggled to kind of connect with the new characters. Um, at the and I feel like JJ could have done a little bit more to get me into them faster. You know, by the end of the movie, I mean the only one who I really still don't, I'm not really into is Poe, and I don't really yeah, dislike him. Not a lot of screen time there, right? He just, you know, he's in and he's out, and I'm not opposed to him. And I think the guy playing him did a fine job. It was just like I don't really know who you are, but now you're back, and I'm excited. Like that was yeah. one of the the shoulder punching scenes for me was the X wing coming low over the water. Oh yeah, in system <laughs> that was. That was awesome. Just, yeah, who'd you go see it with, by the way? Sorry, Toph. My hetero life mate, Will. Deal. Okay. Yeah, so, I, um, I I loved that scene of the, the of the X wing coming over the water. I mm-hmm. the any any scene where they were in a starship was was pretty awesome. The yeah. the Tie Fighter escape was great. Yes. The uh, mainly because of the interplay between the two characters. Yep. Same thing about the. Well, and it's the first time we ever been in an X. Or a TIE fighter. That yes. is true. That wasn't were... just like the quick pilot shot. Like yeah. you actually got to spend right. time in them. Yeah, yeah, kind of cool, right? And the the you also have the uh, the Ray and Finn Millennium Falcon escape, which was super fun and really really well done. Yeah. Um, the interplay between the characters. Uh, I I loved all that stuff. Um, Agreed. My there were there were a couple of scenes. Were, were there any scenes, Topher, or uh, plot points or anything like that yeah. that had you going really like bothered you? There, there, there are two of them, and they're both with Ray, who I've already discussed how much I enjoy and like. Yeah. Um, but her figuring out how to fix the Falcon, yeah, can go there. Her figuring out how to fly it like a hard ass, yeah, less so, like right out of the jump. And it was the same thing with her force powers. Like I've read the explanation that like it's after she interacts with Kylo Ren that she yeah. seems to get like. You know, she picks up on things or something, and even if she's like, she could be, you know, let's let's pretend for the sake of this argument that she is Luke's daughter, and so right. and as such, or is, or spent you know, some time in a training academy and was hidden, sure. you know, Powerful like the theory the I brought up, right? Sure. Either right. one of those fits this. So you say yes, you know, she's she's obviously very capable, but you know, we watch Luke flail around trying to just deflect, you know, the training thing for however long, and then she's fucking mind tricking people. Yeah. Well, to me that was one of the things I was like this is too much too fast. I I can totally agree with that. I will shut up really quick cuz I want you to keep going, but I thought and I didn't even pick up on this going to see the movie. The mm-hmm. Force Awakens just seem cute and all that. Mm-hmm. And oh, it's back. But like maybe right. the Force was awakening in Rey. Like mm-hmm. that's Ultimately, yeah. kind of how I accept that title now is that sure. Ray is this important person in the galaxy and in the history of the Force, and it awakened in her. But go ahead. I've heard the argument that you've got less Force users, so things are more powerful. Yeah, in I've, those I've users. So it was. It was just, it, those two things really were two of the few times I was actually taken out of the story with kind of a yeah. mm, what yeah. moment. And again, when we're talking about a Star Wars film that isn't four, five, or six, that was the majority of the movie previously. Now I can think of two times where I went, eh, little, little questionable. Yeah, um, yeah. Aside That's from that, like the, I mean, like these are the the nittiest picks that I have. Aside from that, 
you know, the, I I wasn't disappointed by this. I really liked it, but it did really leave me wanting to see the next one almost more than I want to see this one again. Like, obviously, as soon as this hits on disc, I will watch the shit out of it. But in reality, I'm way more interested <laughs> in seeing the next one than I am in spending more time watching this one. again. Like, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot okay. of stuff that I could go back and pick up on and that would enjoy and it would be fun. And it would just be fun to see a lot of fun stuff again. But yeah. Yeah. this one served for me as a, a delicious appetizer to where I really hope what they'll do next. Yeah. I, cool. I think uh, my my biggest gripes were not um, necessarily, like, plot-driven. There were a couple of scenes that I felt didn't work. Um, the main one was the scene of uh, when they when they were on the – whatever that pirate ship was, uh, the mm-hmm. smuggling ship, and the two – Bands of smugglers came. Couldn't the, stand that entire scene. Yeah, the raft, so the raft cars, I guess. It was, just, yeah. it was, it was too much CGI in a in a world that was very practical. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and, and, and the it, only – the only sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'll bring ahead. this up just so I can steal something from you since you stole something earlier. The <laughs> only thing about that entire scene that worked for me – is that the Rathtars, like when they got next to a window, had, or like when they were on the mm-hmm. the, yeah. the cockpit, had these little suckers that were exactly like the Minox mm-hmm. <laughs> in like Empire Strikes Back, uh, which yeah. was kind of fun. And so I don't know if either of you picked up on that. It sounds like Toph did at least. Uh, yeah. But go ahead. I hated that scene too for a lot of the same reasons. It, sounds it felt like, like that whole thing could have been left on the editing room yeah. floor and yeah. it wouldn't have changed the story at all. Yeah, and and it doesn't. It's just unnecessary. You don't you don't really need it um, because they already know they already know that that BB-8 is on the Millennium yep. Falcon. Like they yep, already yep. knew that information. Correct. Um, and they they sh- maybe maybe you still have you know them show up on that ship and run into Han Solo and Han Solo yeah, does. Yeah, Han Solo ex- can ex- still track down. it. Yeah. Sure. Right. Fine. It's some signature left in space. Yeah. by the Millennium Falcon that he's been scanning for forever. He finds it. Yeah. They are yeah. on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, they and cast all those other people. You know, one of them was like an Asian like martial arts group in real life, and yeah. they did nothing. They just got eaten by yeah. CGI fucking Cloverfield monsters. Yeah, it was just bad. Yeah. So you just you just that was the that was the one scene where I was like, if I could cut anything out of this movie, it's that. And totally honestly, agree. it. It's a hundred times better than Piusa, so... Oh, God almighty, yes. Well, it's funny that when you ask me, like, <laughs> what were the things that were bad? Yeah. And I I just, like, completely wiped that out. Like, I skipped over it yeah. so quickly in the theaters that it didn't even come to mind yeah. when you said it. So I was just like, you know, it's a, a weird action sequence. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, at least it was quick, and they showed us again that Ray was competent, I guess. Is... Well, I, I will say the only thing I did like about that was that she does initially fuck it up. Like after yeah. fixing and knowing everything about the Falcon, right, she fucks right. up the fuses and opens the door. So that at least was like a yes, there is yeah, hubris sure. to be had. Good right. point. Good and point. then, so then the other thing that uh, I, I think is probably the most made fun of thing on the internet about this movie right now is the low power mode. <laughs> yeah, I see that being uh, like nerd, nerd shorthand for things that are bad about the new trilogy is low power mode. I didn't that whole thing with with R two. I've read, you know, JJ had an interview where he said that he wanted to give R2 his Millennium Falcon yeah. moment, where, like, yeah. they unveil Big R2. character reveal, right. Right, and and for, and like, I get it, R2 is probably the most iconic-looking thing to come out of mm-hmm. the original trilogy. Um, Interesting, I mean, yeah, maybe. Aside from a lightsaber, I guess. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm with it. So, fitty, fitty. Yeah, so, so R2... I get that they wanted to give him a hero moment. Character reveal, that, yeah. That's right, the, but, the thing, yeah. but it was, you know, it was just way too convenient for the story, and it didn't... like It, it was the really deus ex more. machina of yes. Force Awakens. Yes. And, and because R2 is a character that we've always seen, like, being there, being cognizant, being yeah. part of the fabric of this galaxy, yeah. it felt very contrived. If it was a thumb drive and they were like, oh, the thumb drive is encrypted, and I would have let it go instantly. But they were like, well, R2 is in low power mode since Luke left. It felt, it just irked me a little bit. And they do, I, we're going to talk about the novelization a little bit later and some of the information they give you in the novelization. They go into that a little bit more, and JJ oh. has 
said like um you know they the the last piece of the puzzle the you know the little thing yeah. that BB8 has uh-huh. is what started to wake R2 up and you See, know R2 yeah, I read that R2 is old, so it took him a long time to boot up. Mm-hmm. Like, he said that in interviews, but, like, we didn't get any of that in the movie. And it was it right. was just frustrating that he, oh, he, you know, happens to pop online when we need him to for the story. Right, at the that, end. That story beat could have worked so much better if they would have done two things, in my opinion. Because that's one of my biggest gripes with the film as well. Had BB-8 been carrying this piece of information that fit in the puzzle... And woke up R2 in a in a like technological way, it would have right. made a lot more sense. BB-8 is now in R2's presence, and mm-hmm. BB-8 is going to you know have some sort of you know flamethrower thumbs up and R2 <laughs> D2 uh, you know you know sex or yeah. or something like that where it's sex. some physical contact or proximity contact that actually awakens R2, right? And then some sort of like you know, instead of this perfect little puzzle piece that fits into right. a galaxy, which they should have been able to read given all the information they have about the galaxy anyway, and it, like, you know, twisted, you know, like a cryptex or something yeah, where it needed it needed all of the pieces to actually fit together correctly, it that would have just weird. been a better plot point, yeah. Yeah. Because... And I think as it, is, you're it, right. If the first time short. that BB-8 rolls up to R2 is the time when they get when R2 is awakened, it, it you never get that line where it's like, oh, he's been in low power mode since right. Master Luke. That's I think that was the that was the my biggest gripe. Uh, right. Was that that whole thing just felt off to me. Agreed. Um, Brent, did you have any more to add or? Uh, I I I. Sadly, have a lot to add, uh, and I okay. think Dave, you probably picked up on this when we went to see it the first time. Um, because I had actually kind of inundated myself with spoilers, I knew a lot of the either set pieces or major plot points or some of the minor reveals. Like you know, there were big things that happened still that I didn't know how they happened or whatever, um, and I kind of hated that about myself and my viewing, but. At the same time, you know, some of the overarching plot points weren't big surprises for me, so I was picking up on some of the nitty-gritty stuff upon the first viewing. And so some of my gripes were the fact that um, as much as that movie worked and felt like Star Wars and all the music totally worked, I was bummed that there were no new themes that were hummable. You know, the Force theme... You pick up on right away. Uh, Darth Vader's theme you pick up on right yeah. away. And you, you hear Kylo Leia's Ren theme. doesn't have a theme that I can go hum at my house yet. Yeah. Uh, Ray doesn't have a theme I can hum at my et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I was a little bummed by that, and maybe that takes multiple viewings. Maybe after the 14th time I've seen it on Blu-ray, I'll pick yeah. up on that. But the prequels, even like Duel of the Fates, da, 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 yeah. that was very hummable. Uh, the love theme from Episode Two, God, I hate that movie. But that was like it felt like Star Wars, and it was very identifiable. So that was frustrating, like very tangible, noticeable thing I picked up right away. Huh. Um, I also picked up right away because I had just gorged all of the teasers and trailers that there were missing frames and beats from yeah. the teasers and trailers. Um, that happens all that happens you know, all Kylo. Time. And it and it really does. You're right. That's a that's a point we ought to get out there. That it happens all the time. But I guess I was just so ready for that iconic image of like right. Kylo Ren stepping into the winter forest, igniting that lightsaber. Yeah. Because I, I was, that was awesome the first time I saw it in that te- yeah, teaser. Yeah, I agree. And a lot of people got upset about it, but I loved it. I thought it was great and yeah. interesting. We came and then we didn't get in the movie. to it a couple times. We didn't get that specific shot. We didn't get right. that shot. Um, Snoke's dialogue about the Force, there's been an awakening. Have you felt it, mm-hmm. the darkness and the light? He didn't say that. He didn't say the darkness and the light. He said there's right. been an awakening. Have you felt it? Mm-hmm. And then nothing else. I just makes me eager to see what cutscenes. Hopefully, they offer all that because from what I've read, there's stuff I want to see in there. I would imagine um, that's all going to be Maz. 
Maz is a character that I think I want to be invested in. I like that character because of because of kind of the parallels to Yoda, mm-hmm. because of yeah. the parallels to um, the Force Vision, her coming about the lightsaber. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think she should be important, and she basically just disappeared. Uh, yeah. We saw her exit the castle and then never saw her again. Yeah, they and there's clearly – Blow her shit up, and that was that. And there's other stuff that was filmed because we see in the trailer Maz transferring the lightsaber to Leia. We see her, you know, uh, and what's come out is that she was supposed to travel with them to the Resistance base. But there was nothing else for her to do, so they cut her out of the film. But why Why do I want to care about her in Episode Eight? and I hope she shows back up, if we're just kind of left hanging as to what happened to her after yeah. the mm-hmm. castle attack. So was she those in the, are some... the last trailer? Because I'd never seen her before, and I skipped the last trailer. No. I think it was voiceover. She was voiceover right. the last trailer. Oh, right. okay. But... I like uh, that character. The a lot. force is strong in my family. My uh-huh. my father has it. I have it. My sister has it. My sister has it. The shot is a lightsaber being handed to Leia, and it's okay. Maz's hand. Okay. Um, and those who were kind of up on spoilers figured that out, but that shot, that scene, whole entire scene is gone. gone. Yeah. Um, and that's that's kind of a bummer. Um, gripes kind of continuing. Sorry. Um, were, again, I talked about the fast pace. I think that's probably just a product of me wanting as much as they would be willing to give me. Right. Um, and it moving so fast, um, that it was, it just felt, it felt, um, unsatisfied, but that's probably a good thing. You know, it felt like there were a lot of little things that I wish they had just, dwelled on a little bit more or gave me a little bit more exposure to. Max von Sydow seems like he should be an important character. I hope we get him in Rogue One, or I hope we get him in books or something. Um, I mean, they did spend quite a bit of time uh, with with Luke and Ray just staring at each other there at the end. They dwelled dwelled on that for a second. Right. Um, That that was, was I think, the most awkward piece for me. Like that they use that <laughs> helicopter shot yeah. and like all that stuff. I I thought that was weirdly done, but oh, I really? like that we got to see Luke at the end of the I movie. I thought it was a strange choice to do the I loved helicopter his look. shot. Yeah, I loved his look. I'm totally yeah. into that. And I, I at first was like, do we even need that? But then part of the thing I did like about it was that we didn't get just like the whole movie's a dry hand job about finding Luke. That they're like, yeah, no, yeah. they they found him, they got it, and now we're actually going to advance the story. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that on itself alone made that shot worth it. I still think it was strange, but it made me go, okay, that's that's why you do it because. Yeah, yeah. I was actually hoping. No, it, that, it made sense in the context to me. I yeah. was actually hoping that the two of them wouldn't meet. That you would see, you know, her bomb up on the island and climbing the stairs, and then they would just show us Luke, and it would cut to credits, something I like that. that. But but yeah, whatever. Um, um, go ahead. Yeah, and I'm I'm thinking back through the 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 scenes in the movie where I raised my hand in disgust a little bit um, (laughs) that I think Dave saw a little bit. I don't remember what it was, but I do remember that. The cantina felt the, it was mainly the R2-D2 thing. And you've already touched on that. That was my Mm -hmm. biggest gripe probably with the whole thing. The cantina scene felt really kind of jerky in a way. Like, all of a sudden, Han's like, we'll take, I'll take you to this chick. She'll tell you what to do. And very quickly, we see, like, Cantina, but it wasn't exactly like A New Hope, where they do little glimpse and glimpse and glimpse of all these aliens and stuff. It's like and, turkey cuts. And Maz can sense that Han's in the, the castle or whatever. And then they're sitting down at a table, and then all of a sudden, Finn kind of decides on a whim that... I gotta go. The first order is too scary, and I need to just bail yeah, gotta on go. everything. Yeah, I thought they could have left that out too. That was very odd to me. Um, and then Ray just all of a sudden is going to do this Force Vision thing. Like I thought that whole dialogue could have been slower and gone a couple more other places because like Maz seemed important and was like judging people's eyes and is old and yeah. knows a bunch of things. 
Um, so that whole, and I think there's a deleted scene where like uh, Simon Pegg's character shows up and Chewbacca rips an arm out and stuff. So hopefully Ooh. we get some of that. Yeah. So why didn't I get uh, you know, that this time? Yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, so so I have some gripes with just the pacing and especially Maz's character because she was like Lupita was kind of talked about as a main character, right? Or at least like a character that was important. Yeah, she to she was very franchise. important, and she gave us some exposition, but yeah. yeah. Um. So so that part that part was frustrating a little bit. Um. But my biggest gripes were the no new themes, you know, missing kind of iconic uh, stuff from the the trailers, and then just the pace because there it, it opened up so many doors that I want them all to be paid off later. That I'm I'm hoping with time they get there because you know you look at Captain Phasma. That character looked like a badass. She walked around like a badass, mm-hmm. and then she's she basically just, yeah, she's basically just there, like being a hard, being a hard ass, not a badass, uh, yeah. in the beginning of the film, and then immediately they're like they got her at gunpoint, and, and she she's like, all, right. all the <laughs> negative sides of Starkiller Base, and then they put her in a trash compactor. Okay, um, and then you know these little things like. Uh, Han Solo for the very first time in however long he's known Chewbacca is using his bowcaster, like that's total fan service and fun. But like at least at least say something like I forgot how powerful this was, or like yeah. do something like that where it can actually be kind of logical instead of like oh this is the first fucking time Han Solo is ever using a bowcaster. That was another. Was really uh, that was another point Until... where, where I think I was raising my hands. In the that was kind of weird. Yeah, they should have just phrased it differently, and then it would have been great instead of being. Yeah. But then, like, they pay it off when Chewbacca. You've been holding out on me, Chewie. This thing's so powerful, I forgot, or something. Yeah, you know, anything just like that. Little different language, yeah. Because then, when you shoot, when Chewbacca shoots him in the side, and then you can kind of, because again, that explained away one of the things yeah. that I was irritated about was like, I get it, Finn as a stormtrooper, sure, let's assume that they're great at hand to hand combat. We've only seen them be yes. awful at uh, firing blasters at people, but firing let's even blasters. give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that they're great at hand to hand combat. So he's used a thirty storm years, war, right. right? Like, okay, you know, it, it also helps that. We have been set up three times now on how powerful this fucking bowcaster is. So if he's been shot in the side by it, that's a, a relatively, you know, important wound. So yeah. I, was, I was happy that it still didn't – it could have been done better, but at the very least I went, all right, I get why you did this now. Because at first it was just like, this is this is a little too much, JJ. Take it down a notch. Right. Like, I want you to make out with me. I don't need you to shove both hands down your pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> like just one, a hand on my ass, and you know, just some light making out. That's that's all I really need from you right now. You already sealed the deal. I'm already going home with you. Like, take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Leave uh, uh, you overall, you know, JJ did a great job. Actors, great. New characters, great. My my issues were so, you know, to certain scenes, it wasn't the overall plot yeah. and all that. So there were some um, people that had a problem. I was reading online had a problem with Domhnall Gleeson and the speech he made. Oh. But I was really? like, I, I, I loved liked it. Yeah. I thought I, I thought that. that was perfect. That was exactly like he would have to be a total. Um, I don't, I don't know what the right word is. A total uh, like uh, not heretic, but I'm missing the word. Anyways, he would have to be pretty crazy, right? He'd have to be uh, loud and spittle flying everywhere uh, in order for that scene to work. Um, what was the beef with it that it just was too in the scenery or what? That he was too over the top. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I'm with you. Top. Like that. Yeah. That felt very much in line with what I thought. Yeah. That character. I mean, they're about to blow up like five planets. Of, I mean, he yeah. he's got to go big. I mean, well, the other thing is, I think that he feels threatened by Kylo Ren, right? Like he's not yeah. force yeah. sensitive, and he's in front of a, you know Galactic Emperor giant hologram. And, yeah. you know, this other guy's got a fucking mask and a cape and a lightsaber, yeah. and you're, what, like, the administrator? I yeah. kind of feel like that was his chance to, you know, be an awesome badass. So, yeah, yeah no, I, that, to me, felt very much in line with what he was about to do. Yeah, and I, I, they kind of uh, fleshed out that relationship a little bit more in the yeah. novelization. So I, I listened to the novelization on Audible, um, which was great. The guy who does, uh, I think his name is 
uh, oh geez, I'm going to, it's Mark Thompson, I think. Uh, I, I probably screwed that up. But um, he does all pretty much all of the Star Wars audiobooks I've ever listened to. He And he does really great, you know, he does a good Han Solo. He does a good um, Luke in, you know, in the stories that Luke's in. He does a really good, uh, you know, Leia. Um, so he, they, they flesh that out a little bit more where you get to see a little bit more interaction between Kylo Ren and Hux. And there's like a jealousy thing going on there. I thought um, that was made pretty clear by the, yeah. and I thought yeah. they had a pretty good exchange in yeah. the film where, you know, I don't know that we've ever, well, we haven't ever seen anyone, you know, basically talk shit to a Vader. Exactly, or to exactly Vader. right. Right, right. Yeah, Tarkin, Tarkin knew where the line was. Yeah. He'd get yeah. snippy, but not out and out hostile. Right, he right. Just, it's very much out and out hostile. And it was like, yeah. I like this. It's, a, again, another dimension where that was cool to see. Yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts on Snoke? Well, oh, just real quick, uh, one of the, the biggest things, and I should have said this earlier, I, I think I mentioned how great I think all of the new characters are, especially the fact that there are heroes and villains. I'm very excited that while it's not necessarily left defined that everybody made it off of Starkiller Base, we have every right to believe that Hux, mm-hmm. Phasma, right. Kylo Ren... And obviously Snoke, since he was a hologram, which yeah. is apparently the only technology that's advanced since uh, the original yeah. trilogy, uh, are all still alive. Which is very good for the story, since the prequels it was like, now you care about Darth Maul, now he's dead. Yeah. Now you care about Dooku, now he's dead. Here's General Grievous, he's a thing too. Then he's gone. He's dead. Um, you care about Qui-Gon, he's dead now. Yeah, all all the villains seemingly survived this film, so we get to explore those uh, those characters, and maybe that'll redeem Phasma's kind of bullshit role in this one. Yeah, that Snoke, was really weird. Snoke, I have a lot of different, very very nerdy things about who is this guy, is he Plagueis, etc. But in general, I was a little underwhelmed with the CGI, a little underwhelmed with. Um, the actual manifestation of that character, but I'm compelled to learn a lot more about him and figure out his relationship in the universe because Leia knew about him. Han knew about him. Clearly he's been a role player, and some of that I think is kind of ironed out in the novelization a bit more. Yeah, I think... That's exciting. uh, Do you guys think there's like a Wizard of Oz kind of thing going on with him where... You get you you see him set it up for maybe yeah uh-huh. yeah where you see him as this you know this giant scary figure maybe he's you know Yoda ish yeah. somewhere in, yeah in, in, in size um, Ooh. really annoyed by the giant size of him yeah where it's just like are we really gonna do Emperor giant size bad guy is yeah. this really a thing that's gonna happen and so I was very happy. When it's like, oh, thank God, it's a hologram. Okay, fine. I don't care what size he is. It's just like literally having a giant emperor for some reason. That was a bridge I wasn't going to cross. And yeah. I, I like, didn't want to see that? like Attack on Titan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although I was glad to see like that giant, that giant uh, humanoid at Maz Kanata's castle. Like it is kind of weird. Everybody needs to be human sized. That. That yeah. shouldn't be the case in a all, galaxy far, far away. All the things that happened, like, that was the thing that I was like, no, fuck you, JJ. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. you. big emperor. I would be really, I, I think I would be really pissed, too. And like, I don't know you, why. So why why is that Star Destroyer the same size as other ones? He can't even walk through the hallways. He can't even fucking <laughs> fit in there. There's yeah, no fucking yeah. way. So there, so. How is the Snoke supposed to do his dark Sith? Jedi Force, if he can't even fit inside this Star Destroyer? This they did a... Problem. They did a very good and thorough job of showing you all the scars on his face. Yeah, yeah. Which made me, which made me wonder a little bit if maybe there's some Palpatine there, or maybe there's, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe that's because Palpatine falls well, down the thing. But yeah, I think one thing that um, whether it's really been explicit or not, I think we're supposed to believe that the dark side, while powerful, is kind of like a cancer in a sense like it does bad things to mm-hmm. your body it okay. does bad but things it takes to a your physical soul. toll on you yes yeah okay. like that's the trade-off it's more powerful i think mm-hmm. yoda even says it's more powerful right, right? but there's got to be a trade-off right yeah. and so is that trade-off that uh you 
don't get close with people? <laughs> or is that trade-off that uh, chunks of your flesh maybe start looking weird eventually? Yeah, and I think yeah. that makes sense in this universe, yeah. yeah. Well, I think, And I think the main theory online is Plagueis. You mentioned Plagueis. Right. Um, and people There's have even gone the- back. Yeah, have you seen the theme, the music themes? How yeah. they're actually so the scene, yeah, the scene music. where Palpatine talks about Plagueis in Episode Three um, has very similar John Williams music, if not exactly no, not the same. not similar. It's like it's exactly barely the same. off. Yes. Yeah. So then that's a that's a tie, not only to Plagueis though. It would be a tie to Palpatine the and prequels. a tie to Vader. Yeah. So it's a tie to all three of those characters, so it doesn't really tell us exactly who the person is. But they talked about him being able to cheat death, and right. maybe the trade-off of cheating death is you have like a like a weird, you know, Hannibal Lecter ate my face kind of thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I I did like Snoke, but I did I I think in the same way I want Ray to be somebody who's important in the galaxy for some reason, I want Snoke to be somebody who's important in the galaxy for some reason. Well, if he's not, I, then I want to explain yes. how he got where he is. Like, yes. thoroughly I, explained. I, exactly. Yeah. Um, we talked and I about, think the viewers are owed that in the saga. I think so, not, yeah. Not somewhere else. Not in a different media. No, I want it to be yeah. as part of the main narrative. I'll happily go get the other stuff, too, but I want it... Right. I feel like it has a part that needs yes. to be played inside... Agreed. Pictures. And and maybe you get that information from Luke when he's on, yes. like, quote-unquote, he's on Dagobah or whatever. Sure. You, you got that information from Yoda in the original trilogy. But, right. Um, I, so you you talked about getting stuff from elsewhere. Um, there were a couple of Easter eggs in there for people who read some of this, uh, this canon stuff that has come out on the way up. Um, first, you know, Poe is a, is a, you know, kind of a main character, and he... His parents were, uh, you know, a, a pretty big part of one of the the comic series. Um, also, you have from the novelization, you get a little bit more backstory on uh, the differentiation between Leia and the Republic and the Resistance. Okay, um, you get a little bit more information on that, um, which is something nice. that I thought was kind of sorely lacking from yeah. the yeah. movie. Was like, why are they the Resistance? That makes no sense. Um, why are they resistance, and why do I care about these people on a planet that right. I've never seen before dying? Right. While yeah. while it was cool, because we felt the feels for Alderaan, but never saw mm-hmm. any people. At least right. we saw people this time, but it wasn't there so, really so that I'll much I'll give you a little, a little thing. Just So from the novelization of the book, you, there's a character, um, Marcella or Lorcella, Sella is what Leia calls her. Yeah, mm-hmm. Cor- Coracella or something Corsella, like that? Yeah. So she is so. she is Leia's like advisor to the Senate, um, and that's the the African American actress that you see on the planet right. as okay. it gets blown up by Starkiller. That's that character. Uh, so they give so a little bit of scenes. right, uh-huh. a little bit of weight to like what she's supposed to be doing. So she's on that planet trying to get more support from the New Republic for, for. the Resistance. The Resistance, based on the novelization and some of the stuff that I've read. You know, outside of the movie, is Leia's personal private army essentially the New Republic, right. and they kind of set this up in aftermath. Uh, Brent is that right. the New Republic they greatly reduce the size of their military because they don't want to rule via you know fear and military yeah. and stuff like that. Right, right, and it's right. a big it's a big push from Mon Mothma is to do that, um, and they you know. The, the First Order is rising, and Leia is warning people about it, and they are, you know, refusing to create, you know, this, this yeah. uh, you know, this n- newer, bigger army. So Leia gets, you know, like a half-blessing and does it because okay. she feels like they need... And that's, and that's good because that's why it feels like ragtag and scrappy. Because otherwise you're asking yourself... Well, in 30 years, how come the New Republic doesn't have a goddamn... Yeah, why do they still suck? Yeah. Yes, yeah, well, why, yeah. Why, why do they... they still drive X-Wings instead of the hot crazy shit? shit TIE Fighters. They... Yeah. 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 Those so, TIE Fighters were hot shit. So that's so that's that. Um, that that information, and there was also a little bit more information about, like, that gave C-3PO a purpose where um, he activates the droid network of the Resistance, oh, and that's the droid that you see in the cantina. <laughs> That alerts oh, for the thing. Fuck's sake. 
Yeah. 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 That, I take it back, actually. There is one of my other gripes. The actual, like, pop-up hello C-3PO shot. Just like, it's Christ. Which like, one? The first time you oh, see yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boom, that was, like, out that of that was pure comedy, but it lasted a little too long, yeah. It was yeah. like, oh, with my weird red arm. And, it, like, I, it was fine. I was happy to see him, whatever. But, like, actually, like, bursting into screen out of the corner was very much <laughs> like, oh, for yeah. Christ's sake. Oh, for Like, I get it. You're an annoying fuck. You did it. You kept him an annoying fuck. Which you is were fine. annoying before. You're annoying. That's true to the character. However, it's just like I don't know that. I did. I also, that. they gave him a red arm. Really didn't tell us anything about what the fuck happened with the red arm. Nah, like, the red arm. Don't worry about the red uh, arm. It's I'm sure we'll see it in, in a comic or something. Yeah, I. Yeah. I could. I could honestly care less. I don't care that, at all. It's supposed to be just a thing because it's a thing, and He's I'm old, okay. so his arm changed. That's well, the, the entire yeah. purpose. Did you notice that a lot of the uh, the first order stuff had a, like one small red accent? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe mm-hmm. you have C three PO double agent where he mm-hmm. he's. Uh, <laughs> I, I really don't mm-hmm. want to see that movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no. I kind of do now. <laughs> Like I'm he turns out. all hard ass, and it's just been an act the whole time. It's like nope. a, it's like a naked gun movie where C three P. He's got flamethrower fingers. Come Blow on, him up. Come on, C three P. Three and a half. Um, yeah, I, I think I, based on what I've read, there's some deleted scenes that have probably okay. been fleshed out in the novelization that I think we probably did want to see. Um, and I don't, Dave, you've finished it, right? Yeah. Apparently there was a, a deleted scene where Kylo Ren found out that the Millennium Falcon showed up on Starkiller Base Planet and went with some stormtroopers and actually walked on the ship and then, like, uh, felt some of the feels of, like, being I, young and stuff. I didn't catch that part. Okay. I, I, I don't, I might, honestly, I might have missed it. Um Okay. But because I, I I was listening to it on audiobook while you know while okay. I was working and stuff, but it was uh there was the most interesting part to me was when Ray is standing over so a, after the lightsaber battle at the end, which was badass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which was awesome. It was super awesome to see you know that character with the with with Luke's lightsaber and and actually you know doing something with it. Um. When she's standing over him right before the the earthquake happens and they're separated, mm-hmm. there was a a little bit of Snoke voice, where, which was like kill him, like that sort of thing, oh, where wow. she was getting like a call to the dark side. Wow! And, and she and she overcame it. Mm. Wow! So, which is which is not something that happened in the movie, right? So that was a that was a little bit different. Um, there was also the a little bit more explanation from Kylo Ren about why the First Order is doing what it's doing. Because in the movie, they just kind of come off as like, we're evil. We're the, yeah, we're the Empire. And we're the Empire right. because we're the Empire. But there's, right. So there's a little bit more motivation about uh, where they talk about the, the New Republic, uh, they accept disorder. And yeah. we, cannot, we cannot accept disorder. And you kind of got some of that in the shouty speech part. Right, but right. But not enough. Yeah, and, and you don't hear it from Kylo Ren at all. Right. You, you hear it from Hux in the movie, and it's right, right, right. It's interesting to see what his kind of motivation is, or or at least what he, you know what what he says to to Hux, or what he says to to Snoke. So I like I like that part of it too. Yeah, like um, and that and that actually just kind of makes sense. I mean, as yeah, I yeah. I don't want to go political, especially on a Star Wars spoiler podcast. But like, some people need structure. Some people need very regimented lives to have any sort of success. And that's basically what that's appealing to. You yeah. know, the the New Republic is, no, live and let live. The First Order is, no, there's a rhyme and a reason for everything we do, why we do it, and we need to be in power because of that. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's weird. It doesn't sound right, but I could see where they would actually have yeah. a following because people would get into that. And there, there is also um, a moment in the novelization where uh, Kylo Ren and Snoke talk about Vader's sacrifice at the end yeah. of the Jedi. Yep. Where like that's not in the movie, but they because you think like Kylo Ren is foolishly thinking about Vader in the you know in the way that he would have been 
you the know, cult of Vader. Yeah, the cult of Vader. Whereas he's actually making a choice with all of the information, mm-hmm. right? Which is interesting to me. That that makes the character more interesting to me. And that's one of yeah, the things I saw from the concept art too. Just to finish that thought up, yeah, was yeah the, that's where we were gonna go. I was gonna go next. Knights of Ren standing in front of the Vader statue. Yeah, is that the one you were referencing, Brett? Uh, no, I actually didn't cool. know about that one, but yeah, that's um, in the, it. Was in the concept art book that was released right before the movie, I think, and that's popped up online. I've seen it a couple yeah. times. Um, that has them basically, and I think it's it's not what they ended up doing. It was the concept of just that that cult of Vader, where yes. it's that's a messianic figure that they're yeah. Basically, He's a martyr. Precisely. And I think right. I'm actually way more interested. Like, that would be fun, too. Like, honestly, I'd just yeah. take anything more from the Knights of Ren. But I'm, I think it's far more compelling to do the, it's not a cult. He's making a decision, and it's an informed one. Right. And maybe he's the one making the informed decision, and those people are... Totally. The, sure. You know, totally. The, the, the crazy people. Um, well, it, sorry. Just to jump back real quick. That was the one thing, <laughs> as I'm sitting watching the movie... Um, and and I read about some of the stuff that came through the book, you just kind of alluded to it, Dave, where Snoke is telling Kylo Ren, like, the only reason that Darth Vader didn't fulfill his trajectory is he had sentiment, right? right. Wasn't that the word used? Yeah. He, he had sentiment because his son came out of the, the woodwork and pulled him back to the light. You can't uh, right. you can't let Santa sentiment win, and that's exactly what Kylo Ren went through at the end of the film. It was yeah. he didn't let sentiment win. He killed his fucking dad, uh-huh. yeah. and and basically put himself on this trajectory. Excuse me, trajectory for whatever needed to happen, um, kind of moving forward. And that's that's the big divisive moment for Kylo Ren and potentially his future. Right and and what Vader did. And now that you guys are going concept art uh, and kind of upcoming plot ideas, I'd love to delve into that stuff. So, Well, I don't know. I want to reiterate, this could have been something that was just sketched out or storyboarded for this film that wasn't used. Because in a lot of the stuff, smartly, they don't provide context to it. It's just like, yeah. here's concept art around Here it is. this section right. off. So right. uh, I have no idea any context around if this is something that we're going to see more of. I know it's something I want to see more of. That was yeah. one of the things that came yeah. out of that most was just like, I could go for more Knights of Ren. Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. And, 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 and the I, one thing from all of the stuff that I saw um, that has me the most excited is, you know, say what you will about Hayden Christensen. Say what you will about the fact that George Lucas put him back in Return of the Jedi. It seems shit. like Han- yeah, Anakin himself... His Force Ghost was in some of the original ideas for The Force Awakens to be there yeah, talking to Luke. And then simultaneously, Darth Vader, as a Force Ghost, was there to talk to Ren. And so Curious. maybe even Anakin in this forced Force ethereal world was still kind of... Fighting. Taking on both visages yeah. uh, to talk to whoever he wanted, and the only thing about that that is interesting to me is, you know, is Anakin supposed to be the chosen one at this point? We're we're having more movies. Did he really bring balance to the Force? Maybe not. If not, should he still have a role to play in that? And is maybe there's some awesome storyline that's being drummed up at Disney where he is still the chosen one and he's playing both sides and we're going to bring Kylo Ren and Luke to some major head at the end of Episode Nine, where the Force is finally at balance because he, he was kind of the mastermind puppet master of all this stuff as a Force ghost. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know that that's interesting for sure as I, hell. I think it's very interesting, but I think you know we had a text conversation about this recently. I think <laughs> yeah. we're all firmly on uh, team no ghosts. Yes, I, I would like to see <laughs> if if not no ghosts, very few ghosts. Yeah, uh, sparingly. Yeah, I'm um, I'm fine with I'm on team least ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> team if you have to, but please try not to. <laughs> Like I, I mean, we're talking like two minutes and out. Maybe. Uh, th- there is. I think the biggest things that, that that give you more context, and you mentioned this, that like 
sometimes this concept art is just to give you a feel or, you know, it, sure. it goes right. unused or whatever. I think the novelization kind of has some of that stuff where you get an early look at yes. the script and maybe the editing of the final thing isn't yeah. real. Like, or they, they take that part out because it didn't really fit. Exactly. There was a, and you kind of get this from Adam Driver's performance, um, but in the novelization too, they do give you a little bit more about um, af- right after he kills Han, mm-hmm. um, they describe him as uh, feeling stunned by his action. And then the narrator says, um, following through on the act ought to have made him stronger, a part of him believed. Instead, he found himself weakened. Huh. Which wow. you don't really, you don't really no. get that in the movie either. So, no. so although, again, although he got his ass beat by Ray, yeah. right, you know, right, right, five minutes later. So. Well, he was also okay. weakened by the shot in the side, and then yeah, yeah. So, huh? So yeah. Did did Vader 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 did Vader in the novelization at any point actually no. have dialogue? No, 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 okay. no Vader, no Force Ghost, no, none of that. Yeah, there yeah. was also okay. there was no there wasn't any more Luke in the novelization than there was in the movie. Good. Yeah, that would feel cheap. Yeah, that would feel really weird. That's um, interesting. But yeah, I think I think that stuff, those questions are the the most interesting thing to me. The stuff that you know. They didn't give us all the answers, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so let's talk upcoming plot ideas, theories. I mean, we've kind of already gone there. Who is Ray's mom and dad? That's yeah. That's really the biggest absolute question that we have, other than yeah. what's going to happen. If right. we're looking backward, you know, what happened to Kylo? How did that go down with Luke? Who is Snoke? We've yeah. touched on all those questions. Any other questions that you guys felt left unanswered that you want explored? Um, I, I want more on this Jedi Academy. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I want more. That's the thing I want most is I want to know. I want to know who Luke was training. I want to know how yeah. it came about. I want to know. Uh, I, I mean, we understand that it went bad, but I want to know kind of why I want to yeah. know a little bit more about, like Snoke's rise to power yes. and how he knew about Ben to begin with, knew yeah. about Ben yes. Solo. If he's right. not someone, great, fine, then where did he come from? Yeah, and how he had that contact with him, how he was able to get contact while Luke... Sure. And, and we'll probably only get, you know, Luke telling a story. Right. Uh, to Ray, most likely. You know, you'll right. probably get Luke telling sure. a story to Ray. Yeah, but, that's a great opportunity for exposition. A lot yeah, of exposition yeah. that won't feel yeah. contrived. But yeah. yeah, yeah. I also, I mean, I kind of, I, I. This is probably because I just saw Creed yesterday. But I want to <laughs> get, I want to get a like a training montage, montage or like a, <laughs> like a Dagobah moment where she's standing on her head. Yes. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Like I, 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 I want to see a lot of that where you know. That's fair. We yeah. forget that in Empire, I mean, I, I forget this a lot of times, where in Empire, you know, Luke isn't with Leia and Han for most of the movie. Uh-uh. You know, he's off on his own. And according um, to what you believe, that it, it plays in the movie as if it's just a couple hours, but apparently it was a couple days, like, or a long stretch of time. Yeah, like a good stretch right of time. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, that's fair, and, and this is, I'll bring up something real quick. The Knights of Bren, I think we based on the context of the movie, are just supposed to believe that that's some other sect of Force users that's come up that's all dark side driven right? Uh-huh. That's, I, I is that know, how you guys took it? I don't know I have... if they're necessarily Force users. Um, and okay. the, the, one of the reasons why I say that is that I read a thing where somebody was pointing out that none of them have lightsabers. Uh, Except for Kylo, right? Right. So uh, maybe yeah. they are, um, you know, maybe they are just uh, fanatics. Yeah, and, yeah. And they, they, you know, they want to be close to this, but they aren't. So what if I were to propose to you, what if the Knights of Bren were what Luke was training and Kylo just convinced all of the other protégés to overthrow him at yeah. some point? I thought – I'd never thought about that, but somebody brought it up or I read it online or something. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, but, yes, I – like Luke's Jedi school was on the moon of Ren or something, yeah, and he something. was training the Knights of Ren. Yeah, something. Uh, I'd never thought about that, but maybe because I always assumed that was kind of after he left um, Luke's training. Um, yeah. 
but yes, I think that's the biggest question um, is where are all these other force users coming from? What are all their different religions, for back of, lack of a better word? Yeah. Um, some of the stuff that you read online about uh, Max von Sydow's character is that he was a member of the Church of the Force, yeah, which I is saw something that that's we... never been talked about. No. Um, hmm. And... I had a visceral reaction when I when I read that, <laughs> the, hmm. uh, where I was just like, where I was just like, oh no, don't call it that. Go oh, stop, go like, no, quit it. Yeah, but where I was Maz, like, yeah. Maz also seems to have some relation to the force. So it, that's a big question for me is just how all these, you know, we always just were like, there's Jedi and there's Sith, and they both mm-hmm. use the force in different ways. But like, of course, it makes sense. There would be other factions and people right. that uh, do things with the Force and believe yeah. in the Force in different ways. So that's kind of interesting for sure. Right. Was yeah. it you that told me that uh, there was a char- there's a character from uh, Aftermath, the the son, uh, yes. Tim and Wexley, yeah. is Greg Grun- Grunberg's character? Correct. I like uh, that. I like that. Snap, uh, Snap Wexley in the in the film, played by J.J. Uh, Abrams' lucky rabbit foot, Greg Grunberg. Right. I thought um, they gave us another Porkins. I thought that was clutch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, uh, yeah, he is the exact character that uh, occurs in Star Wars Aftermath, Temin Wexley. Um, and so I think that's cool. Like, I don't yeah. want people in these novels to be major characters or have major roles to play. And the Max von Sydow character is a, is should, should be, you know, kind of ironed out in a novel because he doesn't yeah. seem to have a huge role to play in this new story. Uh, same with Temin snap Wexley, uh, Greg Grunberg. But, but yeah, I, I want those types of things that yeah. see, you know, when we're talking small universe problems, that's the right type of small universe yeah. problem. I, yeah, and I, I sure. want to see, I want to see more from the aftermath series in terms of uh, fleshing out those characters. But I also want to see, um, I want to see those characters show up in movies. I like, I like that. Yes. I read that thing and there's a yes. character from that, that is, you know, he's a minor character in the movie, but he is of consequence. You know, he's totally he does things and has a place in the universe. Mm-hmm. Especially um, if they're going to do these, you know, anthology films, that's right. what yeah. we need to tie it all together. You know, I don't want everybody to be the son of this person's, sure. right, right, right. you know, uh, brother, the nephew of this person's aunt. Like, that would just, that would get annoying. But, yeah. Um, but can, yeah. Can I point out one thing real quick? Um, I was just I was just on online as we we're having this conversation, and I caught the screenshot of the Knights of Ren because you were talking about it, and yeah. I wanted mm-hmm. to see that shot. And as I'm looking at it, I go, "Yep, he was the only one with a lightsaber." But then I they all have look, a little bit different weapons. Yeah, I started to look at the different weapons, and in that picture to the right, just to the right of Kylo Ren, there is a hooded figure who's clear. I mean, clearly is not uh, is not a character that we're familiar with, but. He's carrying what looks to me like Ray's bow Ray's staff. staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. And I yeah. and that has been like a kind of an iconic weapon that they have used in the marketing and they've used. Right. And she, she always has it, and even after she has the lightsaber, she carries her staff. Yes. Um, and brings it yep. with her on the Millennium Falcon. Yep. I thought that was yep. interesting. I never very deliberately that. took it to the island to yeah. go train with Luke. Yeah. I never also got that. back that gun. Uh, go yeah. go back and yeah. watch. It doesn't make sense that she has that gun because the first order takes her. How did she get the gun back? Yeah. Well, and also, Plot Plot. also, Plot I like. Point. I would have liked to see her with uh, with Han's blaster on her leg. Yeah. Forty four. That would have been. Yeah. Yeah. That that probably would have been the bridge too far. Like that may have finally been <laughs> to Mary Sue. Like she gets the Falcon. She gets Chewy. She gets the DL forty four. She's got the lightsaber. <laughs> that might have yeah. been like okay, you know what? Other people can have things too. <laughs> wow, you know yeah, I'd, that would I'd be love, a lot. Yeah, I'd love for Finn to get to to end up with the blast. I would be a okay with that. I love Perfectly Poe. Fine. I love um I love Poe as a character mainly not not because the character had enough to do, but because I loved Oscar Isaac. He yeah. was like just Great. swaggery enough for a fighter pilot. 
I, he did great. I just don't know who he is or why I care about him yet. Yeah, exactly. And I'm hoping yeah, and that I think changes that's okay. dramatically. I think that's okay. I think it's early enough where we don't need to know. We don't need to care enough yeah. about Poe Dameron, but I think we can still. Yeah. Yeah. He gave you. Um, I mean, he gave you a reason so that way you could sell Poe's X-wing and you could sell Poe. And I mean, Phasma was just a. a Oh God, I mean, yeah. maybe she had a bigger part in the original script, but she was just an no. action figure. Yeah, based based on what I know, she was a character added to the script because the character design was so cool, and that was an original idea for Kylo Ren. Oh, um, they created okay. that that look, okay. that suit. As could this be Kylo Ren? They said, Nah, probably not. But that's pretty cool. Let's do rad. something with Let's that. Let's keep it. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Which which I'm good with. But I then you got to flesh that out later, or else it seems like yeah. just an action figure march- merchandise ploy. Um. So one upcoming plot idea. I think I texted you guys earlier about this, and then then I'll be spent for the night. The Force Vision. I want yep. to analyze the shit out of that entire sequence, right? We've read online, Frank Oz doing Yoda's voice Uh was in there. They sampled uh, Alec Guinness and made him say Ray, which leads to the fan theory of maybe he's Uh Kenobi's granddaughter, right? Ewan McGregor came in and recorded dialogue for that. That's all really cool. There's a lot going on. That was our real, that was our only shot of the Knights of Ren was in that Force vision. There was a whole bunch of stuff in there in the noveliz- novelization, apparently, or in the script that's been released online that's more hashed out and confirming what we saw. Hmm. But there was Luke's no uh, yeah. from Empire Strikes Back. There was images of Cloud City in yeah. Ray Ray's vision, Ray walking through the corridors of Cloud City. That stuff's interesting. Maz specifically said, you know, how did you come upon this lightsaber? That's a story for another time. Yeah. So I think they're going to go there. I think – and I don't think that's an yeah. anthology film, film. I think that's important enough. I don't think that's a novel. I think it's important enough yeah. to this saga that we're going to get that or at least have somebody walk us through that. And uh, there were rumors, I think, because uh, uh, Billy D. Williams came back and did recordings for the Star Wars Rebels TV show – he's probably going to have a role to play at some point in this saga. That's kind of fun. So one idea is that maybe he went back to Cloud City and took over Cloud City again. Maybe they go back to Cloud City in Episode Eight. Maybe they find Lando there. Maybe they get to hear the whole story of some random guy found this lightsaber while he was cleaning the air ducts mm-hmm. at uh, Cloud City. and that's He how found a hand out. and a lightsaber. Yeah, I I like I like that idea. I like I, if you're gonna re because Lando has something to do now, right? Yeah, he's gonna avenge his buddy's death, right? Maybe he's compelled to re up his investment in whatever the resistance is doing because Kylo Ren fucked up his buddy Han, mm-hmm. and you know this lightsaber yeah. that was found on this place he used to uh, be an administrator is playing a big role still in the galaxy's yeah. future. So, I, in, in the same way maybe that it we, seems contrived, I don't know. In the same way that we want to see uh, a, a, a scaled back role for Leia, if if Lando happens to be in the movie, I would like to see a scaled back role for, oh, totally. for Lando. I, you don't, I, don't need, I don't need a half hour of Billy D. Williams in the movie. Agreed. Ooh, I totally need, agree. I kind of totally. need oh, a half really? an hour of Billy D. Williams. No. Have you, no, have you seen that. him recently? Oh, yeah. He's kind of... Yeah. <laughs> sketchy. Sketchy yeah. at best, yeah. yeah I'm I, he's a sketchy when he was in the original trilogy. Yeah, but yeah. he was so slick. No, okay. I, it, it totally worked in, in yeah. Empire Strikes Back. But. I did like, you know, talking about... Speaking of original trilogy characters, I did like that if, you know, they, they killed off Han Solo, but they gave him a, one last adventure. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Where he was a big part of the movie... And it, you felt like you've been waiting 30 years to see more Han Solo, yeah. that you got to see it. And it that he disappoint. was the hero uh, of the day, and he made the choice to do the honorable thing to go yep. and try to turn, you know, to go try and help his son. Like, I, right. I like that they gave you that kind mm-hmm. of catharsis before they, you know, killed him off, that you got right. to see 
one last adventure where him and Chewie are busting in places and he's totally. knocking people down with the blaster. Like, I, right. I like that. Um, yeah. I do think that I read um, that J- J.J. and Kathleen Kennedy have both said that all of the characters from this movie yeah. will be in episode eight. Interesting. So for, for Han, that obviously means uh, flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Or Which, clones. The technology oh, exists. No, and... Harrison Ford is... Harrison Ford is definitely done. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, but they, they haven't really done flashbacks outside of this Force vision. Yeah. So maybe you get more of that, or maybe you get you know Luke telling the story. Maybe you get another Force vision where she, she revisits and, and sees his death again. You know, right? Ray relives that or something. But I can't imagine that there's going to be a lot of Harrison Ford, Han Solo in the next movie. No. And I don't really want there to be. Yeah, I don't know that there should be, quite like, frankly. Turn the pa- yeah, turn the page. I, I totally agree. Um, you know, whether she says that and she means Harrison Ford is actually back or not, I don't know. Whether that means flashback or not, I don't know. Whether that means they put an in for that character to somehow be revived, I have a hard time believing that. But I don't, it I does don't seem that. like Harrison Ford, the person actually enjoyed making this film. He looked like he did. Yeah. yeah. And given everything he's done in the promotional stuff for this film, I guess I could potentially see a scenario where Harrison Ford has a role to play in future films because he wants to do it. But Han Solo character died, and he's wanted it dead for a long time, and I think that's the best place for the future of this character. Um so we'll see what that all means. Han, but. Han is and always will be one of my favorite characters from this franchise, but I think his place is to be dead now. Like that right. is that is his right. place. I don't need more Han Solo. I got four movies worth of Han Solo, and mm-hmm. you know what? I'm gonna get a prequel movie or yeah. two or three. Yeah. When they cast the new Han Solo. Yep. So yeah. His his story moving forward in the you know if we're gonna call it the Skywalker saga mm-hmm. is no longer necessary. Agreed. Yep. Um, the only place where I could see them doing a flashback of like they something they shot already would be if he was involved in dropping Ray off on that planet, or mm-hmm. if he was involved, or if they would show you know a flashback to Ben's childhood in some way. Yeah, that'd be right. cool. And, and they already shot it. Like they said, "Hey, we need this for eight. Yep. Yep. We need you to let's do go ahead this. and knock this out now." Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. Um, do you guys have any last uh, closing thoughts? I I kind of want to leave with just like these a very small like if you had to pick one one thing that was your favorite thing that happened, um, like your favorite Easter egg or callback to. Um, the original trilogy, or your favorite thing that was new, but, you know, small. Like a small thing that you picked out. I'll start and give you guys a minute to think. Mine was uh, when they were escaping Jakku on the Millennium Falcon, and he pops down into the turret, into the gun turret, Mm -hmm. and the screen pops up, and it's the same screen that they had in A New Hope. Thank you. That was the first thing where I elbowed you, and I was like, it's the same screen. Yeah. Like, yeah, you did. I, I don't. I don't. I didn't need that to happen, but it was awesome that it did. It was so good. It, it was, was awesome. Per, it was. It was the right thing to do, and yeah. and thank you for doing it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That was great. I, I love that. I I got one. I'm really kind of pissed that we didn't bring this up earlier. BB-8 could have been the fucking Jar Jar of this oh, film. Oh, totally could have. And BB-8 was great for every single reason that R2 was great in the original trilogy yeah. and mm-hmm. still worked in the prequel trilogy. BB-8 is fun, mm-hmm. is appropriate, is, you know, great someone I can... Boy. Somehow I can kind of see his emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. BB-8 totally worked. Thank you. In the same way Thank that R2 you. Works, yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And and the thumbs up with the flamethrower was kind of <laughs> with the welder. It, yeah. it was a little silly, the like balancing thing while they're flying through. Like yeah. nobody else seems to have gravity issues when they're they're flying places, but BB-8 rolls around, but with the you know grappling okay. hooks, it, yeah. it it totally worked. It was fine. I was good with all that. It was fun. Yeah, 
Um, honestly, the I'm I'm doing I'm gonna pick two because they're both things we've touched on, but the X wings flying over the water. Oh yeah. Just like the in atmosphere stuff that we hadn't ever really had before. Yes. Was just a fucking blast. Like that was one that got like a visceral like out of me in the theater. Yeah. Um, you're, you're right. We never really see space like starships on planet. No, you kind of watch them totally. take off and then they just leave. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that's something we haven't ever really had before and we have like the great thing with the Falcon and everything else, but that just set up shot with the X-Wing coming in low kicking up the huge clouds of steam off the lake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then honestly, the other one that we already knew it was there, but Chewie were home. Yeah, uh, it hit again. Like it hit just as hard. You guys, it it seemed like a different shot to me uh, because like there, it didn't tape. like have that pregnant pause after. No, it was much like, faster. He like, was. It worked in yes, the sense. Yeah, but I, it Absolutely. was also that like yeah. you know Chewie were home felt like kind of like a promise. Like let's hope that we are. And by the time we got that, right. it was like, oh, okay, we we are. We actually are. Like, we've gotten another good Star Wars movie. Yes. Because by that point, I already felt great about it. I did, too. By the I time we got to the point where we saw Han and Chewie for the first time, I was already invested mm-hmm. in, I was the, happy. in this story. I was curious. Was I wanted more. Yep. Also, and, and my last one that I'll say is the when Kylo Ren stopped the blaster bolt. That was so I fucking oh, cool. Yeah. That was so fucking cool. That was badass. You like, know, we've, I've never seen anybody do that before, we, but it makes sense. He should be. I able liked. To do it. I liked seeing force powers used in a different way than we'd yeah. seen mm-hmm. in some of the other films, and that was that was right off right off the cuff. Yep. Like right. here we go. Immediately we see this guy like whoa. He's a badass. Look at that crackling laser right. blast. You know, the technology didn't exist in uh, 77, 80, or 83 to do, to do things like that. Uh, but still, like, that just, that was iconic. I right think the there, best part so. about it is when it released, too. That it's right. still sitting there, like, long after everything else is done. It was a pain. Yeah, right? yeah it was like, a good pain. And then it snaps, too. Oh, yeah. I liked everything yeah. about that. Bravo to JJ. Bravo to Disney. Bravo. I think I think they are doing all these things very strategically, and mm-hmm. I can't appreciate that enough because that was, you know, really when we boil it down, that was the biggest issue with uh, the prequels was it was just Lucas saying, "I think we should do this," and everyone going, mm-hmm. "Sure, George, sounds great," yep. yeah. and they. Nothing was done strategically. Everything was done based on budget. Everything was done based on, I have a crazy idea. Okay, George, let's do that. Yeah. Um, and and so, I like that they involved, involved people who were fans. They had, you know, Simon Pegg yeah. on the set to talk through it. They involved, uh, like, Lawrence Kasdan was helped to come up with the story for this They trilogy. had guys that were like building R2 units in their garage to help yeah. them build right. astromech droids for yes. the film. Yes. That's that's good. Like yes. In, you do those things. Whereas and and in the prequels it was very much like Lucas saying, "Listen, this is my vision. Fuck off if you don't like it." Dictums from on high on top right, of the mountain top. Right. And and we'll we'll leave his recent comments. I, like I don't want to talk about yeah, fucking no. Lucas. Fuck I really don't. Really Lucas. I really Fuck don't. You very and, much. And he has really come off. Like thank you, George, for those first three movies. However much of that was you, mm-hmm. I really really appreciate you. And I like I love living in this universe. So I will never be able to thank you enough for that. However, just ride off into the distance. You're a big bag of dicks now, George. Just, just ride. Just go and, away. Yeah just comes off as very petulant. Yes. Yes, that's the perfect word for that. Mm-hmm. Petulant. Great. Word. Sums them up. So, all right. Um, well, I think that's that was our first movie review episode, and I I really like the feel of it. Um, I think we'll do this if not sooner. Well, I think ca- uh, Captain America 3 Civil War mm-hmm. would be the, okay. the next one that's on my radar that deserves this kind of treatment. Um I like it. I like uh, I like being able to to dive into the nitty gritty uh, mm-hmm. and talk about you know talk about whether or not uh, Snoke is the Wizard of Oz. Like that was fun <laughs> for me. So that that's exactly you know the type of thing that we do at Pop Nerdery. 
Uh, as a reminder, join us right in the comments section of this podcast post. Let us know what your favorite characters were. Let us know, you know, what worked, what didn't work, why it felt too much like the original trilogy, why it didn't feel enough like the original trilogy. Uh, let us know. And rate, review us right there on iTunes. Please help out the show. Recommend us to your friends, uh, your your loved ones, and uh, those match winks that you've been uh, looking to connect uh-huh. with. <laughs> there you go. Uh, gentlemen, where can our friends hear your your uh, musings when they're not listening to the podcast? I tweet as at Pop Nerdery for the show, uh, and then I, I tweet as at Dave Fultz for everything else. I'm at the hospital ball, and I swear to God, sports season will end sometime, and I'll go back to talking <laughs> about normal things. Just kidding, it never ends. It never ends. Just kidding. Air quotes, normal things. Uh, yeah. And I tweet as at shouldn't brag, but um, please do check us out, uh, but hit us up on the comments. That's going to be your easiest way to get in touch with us. Let us know what ideas you have for us for future conversations. I'm and super excited as always, for episode eight. We've got a lot yeah. to cover. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot to cover. Uh, sure. Namely, Deadpool trailers. Oh, Woo! yeah! All right. Uh, as always, shout out to Carrie and or Carl the Destroyer. <laughs> and uh, my friends, <laughs> finger guns. Finger guns. That was good. As long, but as good. Two hours. Right? Two hours. I mean, if we're going to do two hours. I, yeah, I say, if we're going to do two hours on something, it was going to be Star Wars. <laughs> every every other episode should never reach that length. But so oh, no, yeah, yeah. I'm good with it. It should be yeah. two hours. Holy shit. Yeah. I'm spent.